kid that did that. That's pretty sweet. Right That's there. 3D. All right, we got about a minute and 15 seconds for it to us. This angle's pretty good, right? I can lean more this way if I need to. How's that? How's that? That's good to me. Look good on the camera, Cole Pepper. Normally behind them. <laughs> I see you with them doctors interviews. You used to the. And we welcome you tonight to Pike County, a battle, a confrontation in Pike County, a region championship possibly on the line as we welcome you to Southwest Mississippi Community College for the South Pike Eagles 5-2 record coming in, taking on the North Pike Jaguars 5-1 for our KDMC Game of the Week fueled by Centerpoint Energy. Good evening, everyone, and we welcome you here into the press box as I want to welcome along David Culpepper with us here tonight as he'll be doing color with me here in the press box. Beautiful night for football, cold weather. It's what you expect uh, here in late October. And the last Friday night here in October, we've got a good one, David. You know, South Pike, they've been the cream of the crop in Region 6-4A. They've won three region titles in a row. They've won two in a row over North Pike. But it, this is a team, a North Pike team, that's looking to kind of reverse recent trends. They're playing some pretty good football of their own. Jason, they really are. And, you know, North Pike's been a team that's c consistently in the playoffs year in and year out, you know, and they make that run pretty deep every year. And, you know, past couple of years they hadn't been able tr to quite get that run as deep as where they wanted to be. So tonight's a great inter-county matchup with a lot on the line, and we'll go through this later on in the broadcast, I'm sure. The scenarios of the winner of this game wins district if. Mm. So you need some help if you're one of these two teams, but the biggest thing you can do is help yourself at this point. And this is a – who's North Pike? You know, first-year coach Matthew Mock. Of course, he spent some time at South Panola. North Pike is a team you expect to be right in the mix of the 4A playoffs every year along with South Pike. Their nemesis tonight, this is a South Pike or a North Pike team. Their motto is pretty much rock 'em sock 'em old school, run the football. David, they average over 200 yards rushing per game. They don't throw it a whole lot, but they got a lot of different guys that will tote the rock for them tonight and make plays. Jason, you're exactly right. And young man uh, Demarion Montgomery leads the team with 61 carries on this uh, shortened season, if you will. But, you know, if you got him, then you look at Jamarius Lewis, wide receiver with 41 carries with the jet sweep and some other things uh, putting him in motion. And then you got the quarterback, Cardell McDowell, with 26 carries himself. So many offenses uh, like to spread this thing out. These two teams like to ground and pound this thing. They'll still spread you out, but their, their main focus on offense is let's run the football, control the clock. And the key tonight, we were watching in the pregame, you know, we did see the teams warm up throwing the football. You just never know how it's going to go with two teams that run the football, run the football. Which one can throw it tonight and kind of throw a, a monkey wrench in the plans for the defense on the other side of the ball? That'll be interesting tonight as we progress here in the pregame show. We'll take our first two-minute break of the KDMC pregame show. Come back and tell you a little bit more about South Pike and give you the starting lineups right here on the Spirit Media Network. During times of uncertainty, it's comforting to know we have a healthcare system in our community that's been committed to supporting us for well over a century. In this current time, we are standing together and our bond is stronger than ever. KDMC, caring for our community like no one else can. I can totally see us cooking in this kitchen. 
I can totally see us cooking like pros with natural gas. Oh, I would love to soak in that tub. I'd love to save energy and money with a natural gas water heater. I can imagine cuddling up in here. Because natural gas heating keeps the house comfortable when we need it. We have to get this house. We have to get natural gas. We're investing in infrastructure to help bring comfort and savings to you. Visit centerpointenergy.com slash natural gas benefits. Centerpoint Energy, always there. Hello, I'm Gary Jolly from the tractor store in Richland. Now's the best time of the year to save more with Mahindra. And it all starts with zero. Pay zero down and zero percent interest up to 60 months. That's more for less on many of Mahindra's best-selling models with tractors that deliver more lift, capacity, fuel efficiency, and built-in weight. So get zero down, zero percent interest for up to 60 months on Mahindra, the world's number one selling tractor, Mahindra, available at the tractor store in Richland. The Spirit Media Network is providing coverage of sports, faith, and entertainment like no one else in Mississippi and the Deep South. No other media outlet touches all the bases as we do, from the Friday night lights to rubbing shoulders with the biggest names in college athletics. Be sure to follow us on our multiple platforms, including Facebook, Twitter, our YouTube channel, and by downloading our Roku slash smart TV channel, Spirit Live. Check out our website at spiritmedianet.com for upcoming projects and broadcasts. And stay up to date with what's happening on the Spirit Media Network where we're changing the game. And we welcome you back here to Southwest Mississippi Community College as we continue here at the KDMC pregame show. Moments away from a Pike County confrontation. I've been looking forward to this one all week. Glad to have David Culpepper here in the press box with us tonight. We welcome him back in as well as we get all set North Pike and South Pike. A region title possibly on the line here tonight. And David, we talked about the offense but these are two defensive units they will really get after you this south pike defense they've got an extra layer of nastiness saltiness i don't know which one they can really get to the ball quick and when they get there they're in a bad mood so this chess match between the rushing attack of north pike and this defense of south pike the eagle defense it's going to be a fun chess match to watch jason it really is and i'm gonna tell you what if you like old style football Load up, run the football, and get physical. Tonight's the night to watch it. South Pike's defense is 72 tackles for loss. That's 72 tackles a lot. Have, have for loss. And, and, you know, that means their defensive front's doing a couple of things right up front. They're getting the things that done up front that they need to do. They're getting penetration. They're getting off blocks, and the linebackers are cleaning things up. But on the back side of that, North Pike's averaging 200 yards a game on the ground. They're doing something right up front as well. So tonight – that wheel's got to get broken. Somebody's got to give up what they normally do in their strength. And I got a sneaky feeling it, what the, the, the gamble there tonight is going to be what team can throw the ball better mm. than the other team and have success putting the ball in the air because it's going to be tough to get, to get yardage, 20 tackles. And it's interesting. You said, We were watching the, the teams warm up, and we looked at each other and said, these teams don't look too shabby throwing the football, no, and that it, could be the difference tonight. Yeah, it really is, you know. And I really, you know, most time you hear coach, coaches say, and kind of coach speak, if we can not turn it over, if we can just get off the field on third downs and do those things. Tonight, I think it boils down to who can do something a little extra, like put the ball in the air and have some success. Because if you're running the football. That defensive back, your back four start creeping in, creeping in, and then you start loading up for the run. You start getting mismatches, and you start getting everybody coming in the box, and you're able to go over the top. Boom, big play. We're looking forward to it. When we come back, we'll give you the starting lineups, the teams making their way onto the field here at Southwest Mississippi Community College. When we come back, we'll give you the starting lineups, our final break of the KDMC pregame show back in two minutes here on the Spirit Media Network. King's Daughters Medical Center and Brookhaven Urology are pleased to announce the addition of Dr. Joel Duff to their medical staff. Dr. Duff specializes in general urology, kidney stones, men's and women's urological health, and diagnosing and treating urologic cancers. Don't let these health issues restrict your lifestyle and keep you from enjoying life with your family and friends. Dr. Duff and the staff at Brookhaven Urology are here to serve your needs. To make your appointment, call 601-833-5713 today. A smile is one of the first things most people notice. And for over a decade, Germany Dental has helped change smiles for thousands of people across Mississippi. 
I was so embarrassed about my teeth that I never smiled. But now that I have dental implants and cosmetic veneers from Germany Dental, I can't stop smiling. My decision to see Dr. Germany literally changed my life. Germany Dental, changing lives one smile at a time. Call 601-825-4746 today. You often hear about Mississippi's best kept secrets. If you're looking for the perfect place for your next weekend getaway or the just right setting for your wedding reception, look no further than the best kept secret in Mississippi, the Cart Barn Inn. The Cart Barn Inn is tucked away in Bruce, Mississippi, less than 30 minutes from Oxford and is a full service bed and breakfast. Each room at the Cart Barn Inn is fully furnished, including flat screen TVs, microwaves, refrigerators, wireless internet, comfortable seats areas and docking stations for your smartphones just in case you forgot your charger. Enjoy breakfast in the morning or a nice evening walk in our privately fenced in courtyard. Enjoy the game outside on our patio area or take a walk on our boardwalk to our private gazebo. Kay Tyler and her staff will meet every expectation during your stay. Call and book your reservation today at 662-983-7829 or log on to cartbarnin.com. Cart Barn Inn, the best kept secret in Mississippi. Back with you here at beautiful Southwest Mississippi Community College. We're nearing kickoff here just a couple of minutes away. The team's meeting for the coin toss. South Pike and North Pike, our KDMC Game of the Week, fueled by Centerpoint Energy. Let's look at tonight's starting lineups presented by the Mahindra 1500 Series Tractor. Only at the tractor store as we'll look at first the North Pike offense, and this is a North Pike offense. Montgomery's going to get the load tonight, but should the Jags need a big catch, look for Fountain. He's the wideout to get some looks tonight. That's a look at the North Pike offensive starters. Let's look at the defense for the North Pike defense. This is a defense that South Pike's going to get a lot of the ink defensively, but this North Pike defense, Robinson, the linebacker, leading tackler. He spends a lot of time in the backfield. Lewis is another. We're going to call his name quite a bit tonight. The South Pike Eagles, this is a team they've won three region championships in a row. They could add a fourth in a row tonight if they win and get some things to go their way. David and I will tell you about that here in a little bit. But this offense for South Pike, you got to watch Reynolds. He's four totes away from 100 carries on the season. He'll be the workhorse tonight. That's a look at the offense. Now let's look. Or here, look, let's look at the defense. Newman's already got it pulled up for us. Felder's the leading tackler on this Eagle squad, David. He's a nightmare to prepare for as an offense. Look for Felder to impact this game in a big way tonight. That's a look at the starting lineups brought to you by the Mahindra 1500 Series Tractor. Only at the Tractor Store of Richland as we close out the KDMC pregame show. And we are ready for football here tonight. Glad that you're with us. South Pike and North Pike. Real quick, a couple of keys to victory. You got some ideas there? Yeah. Uh, keys to victory for South Pike. Uh, well, let me just say, the team that controls the line of scrimmage and is able to force their will and, uh, like I said earlier, put the ball in the air is going to have success and walk out of here with a W tonight. I don't think it you – know, obviously turnovers can, can create some problems, but – all in all, you got to be able to put the ball in the air because you can't just be one-dimensional. And South Pike looks like they're going to receive. And if you're looking at your screen, they're going from left to right. Gorgeous, gorgeous night for football. We're going to dip into here in southwest Mississippi around the what? Upper uh, 40s, maybe? I think it's uh, mid-40s. Mid I mid think it's 44, 40s. 45 for tonight. It's so. even cooler. Got a full moon out tonight as well. By the way, happy birthday to – Papa Scar. Today yeah. is Papa Scar's birthday. You and him had a chance to hang out a couple times, and of course, he's celebrating his 30th birthday today. So happy birthday, Dad! <laughs> I love joking with him about his 30th birthday. South Pike. They're going to send Reynolds part of the return formation. A high end over end kick going to be taken by South Pike at around the 10. Nice return here by the Eagles and chopped down. Boy, he had a lot of pasture there, David. A nice return here by Brandon Johnson. Possibly a touchdown saving tackle by North Pike. It's first and 10 for the Eagles. Jason, on that kickoff, he just filled it at about the 10 yard line and just followed his wedge right up the middle, and it parted pretty good. And like I said, had he not got him around the ankles, he was still running. We told you in the pregame, we were looking at the, the lineups, the starting lineups, and told you a lot about 
Cam Reynolds, he's going to get a lot of the load tonight. But the quarterback, Royal, the senior, he's toted the ball quite a bit as well. He's one carry away from 80 totes on the season. So it'll be interesting to see how he's used. There's a lot of confusion here on the first play. Play clock, they got plenty of time here, around 16 seconds. But late substitution, shotgun formation here for Royal. He's going to turn a little bit of a broken play there, and Royal's going to take off. He's got some good yardage on first down. David, it looked like there was a little mishap there on the exchange, but Royal managed to pick up positive yards. He did, and he took it around the edge there and was able to – it's basically a read option play there where he, where he pulls the ball, but the back uh, was kind of not on the same page with him there. But nice pick up, picked up four and a half, five yards there for Royal on the first down play. Second and five now for the Eagles. They'll send twins left and right. Just underway here, gorgeous, crisp October night. Reynolds tries to dodge some tacklers, and he can't. North Pike all over it. Take your pick of Jaguars that got there first, a loss on the play. It'll be third down to long. Well, I can tell you who got there first. Mr. Felder got there first. <laughs> <laughs> Young man is a 6'3", uh, 307-pound junior Goodness. anchoring the middle of that defensive line and just blew it up, Jason. What do we say here in these parts? That's a big old boy. That's a big youngin'. That's a big youngin'. And a junior, <laughs> he's still got a year to work out and get better. Big play there, third down and long. Royal going to roll to the right. He wants to air it out, going long, one-on-one. -on -one. Coverage and almost caught as nearly coming up with it is Brandon Johnson here on the near side. Good coverage, although that hit Johnson in the hands, incomplete. It'll bring up fourth down. North Pike gets the three and out on defense. North Pike, defensive back number seven there, breaks it up. Great job, and there it is, the passing game that we talked about, Jason, the pregame show of, you know, South, South Pike's already pushing the envelope to push the ball deep and to loosen them up a little bit around that defensive line. Things like that also slows that pass rush down just a little bit too. Oh, for sure. They are not giving a whole lot of respect to the punter, Kobe Wall, here. The left footer comes forward, a shallow kick going to be taken by North Pike, and they're going to get in plus territory here to the 49-yard line of South Pike and sparkling field position for North Pike on their first offensive possession. So they get the three and out. They get the good punt return here. It was a shallow punt, and now they're – First possession is on the plus side of the 50. It is. Uh, Jacoby Matthews returned the punt for the North Pike Jaguars and got the ball back across midfield. And, you know, looks like we're looking at the University of North Carolina in these baby blue shirts. and I'm um, telling you, man. Powder blue. So it looks good. It's going to be hard not to call them the, the Tar Heels tonight. McDowell's going to shift his backs and now over to the slot. Now you got a flag coming in. Legal formation, I yeah. believe. Yeah. That's going to be the call from the official. And they throw the ball to him right when he's getting ready to make the call. <laughs> <laughs> hey, kudos to the head referee here with the uh, the pink mask on, honoring uh, Breast Cancer Awareness Month. Almost, almost over here. So five-yard penalty is going to back them up to about the 46 in their own territory. Not what you wanted, Jason, mm -hmm. coming out on your first possession to be, to be behind the chains. Quad formation to the right. Quick pitch and catch far side and dropping it is the intended receiver there. I want to say that that was Jacoby Matthews, and it was. He just dropped it. Yeah, McDowell threw a low pass out there to him. He had the blocker set up up front. He had one guy to beat before he got to the second level, and pass was short and wasn't able to complete it. Number 27, uh, that is Lipscomb for South Pike right there on the spot. These defenses, you can just tell in the first couple of minutes, they really, really fly to the ball. They're very active. Very active. Twins to the left and to the right for McDowell. He's going to turn in hand. Nice little jump cut here by the running back. That's Montgomery trying to get away. He gets to the sideline and managed to pick up some of that lost yardage back, but give credit to this defense here for South Pike as they stretch it out. Minimal gain. It'll be third down and long coming up. Senior outside linebacker Brennan Felder stretched the ball out and uh, waited for his friends to come give him some help. Bring up third and 15. 
North Pike quickly to the line here. Just underway here in this first quarter. South Pike got the football around the 30-yard line. Great return and three and out. North Pike got the football on the 49. Then their penalties set them back, and now they're Trying to make something out of this possession. Screen pass set up here, short of the first down. A flag is down on the play. Looks like that's in the neighborhood of either holding. Yes, sir. And it is. It's going to be holding on number 51, uh, Anthony Baraska, offensive uh, tackle. Do you decline this one here if you're South Pike or no? Well, it's 10 yards from the spot of the foul. Now you back so you up. back them up. Field position. It's what you do. Now, you give them another down, though. Yeah, but you also you <laughs> go from you, you also go to third and about twenty two. <laughs> Actually, maybe third and thirty two when it's all said and done. Uh, Lane Kiffin's ruined it for me. Let's I want to go five, every time I'm watching ten, a game. I want to go for it now. Fifteen. Yeah, it's uh, third and twenty two. Is that it? Goodness gracious! So third down and a toss back to Rankin County, where we drove from this afternoon. As McDowell. He's got trips to the near side. Montgomery is flanked to his left shoulder. Play clock. Plenty of time down to 17 seconds. Third and 26 play here. McDowell wants to air it out. He throws into double coverage and is caught. And off to the races for the score. Touchdown, North Pike. That football was in double coverage. And somehow coming down with it is Jermarius Lewis, the junior. And we got a flag on the play, it's going to be excessive celebration after the touchdown call. And, Jason, just a great go route right there. Uh, again, going back to what we talked about in the pregame show, hey, you've got people around, you got a bunch of guys around the line of scrimmage in that box. you got seven, eight guys in there. you got to be able to throw the football because you got to loosen that stuff up so you can run the football. And great job by North Pike of converting there now the – Head coach is out having a conversation with the official about, mm, what about this flag? Double coverage. I mean, that was a gutsy throw. Well, I take that back. Oh. The personal foul against South Pike. It's not against wow. North Pike. It's okay. against South Pike. Personal foul against defense, and they will, well, we got two flags. Didn't realize we had two flags. He had one down there, and you'll probably, yep. Let's take a look at the KDMC replay on that touchdown grab by Lewis. By the way, that's only his second touchdown grab of the season. And Beautiful. he got smoked on the release. Yeah, he did. Give credit to Lewis. Just turns around and says, hey, Mom, look what I found. And then tosses the ball in the air, obviously. And that's what got the flag, so there is a – Excessive celebration flag, which will be marked off on the kickoff. Extra point is up and is perfect. North Pike scratches first. It's seven to nothing. Jaguars on top of the Eagles. We'll take a break back in 30 seconds on the Spirit Media Network. Want to save 25 to 30% on your energy bills? Custom Metal Solutions can do it fast with retrofit metal roofing. Throughout the day, asphalt shingles absorb the sun's energy, keeping your attic space hot and forcing your air conditioning to run. Our cool metal roofing product helps reflect the sun's energy, keeping your attic cooler and your AC off. We use top-of-the-line equipment and cut each sheet to your exact measurement to ensure a fast and easy install. If you want the highest quality metal roofing product on the market, call Custom Metal Solutions today in Flowwood. Back with you here at Southwest Mississippi Community College. North Pike on a third down and 26. They convert with a touchdown pass to Jamarius Lewis, the junior wideout, in double coverage. One of the defenders, David, I think he might have fallen down. But either way, it goes for six. And you had a penalty, an excessive celebration penalty against North Pike. So they're going to have to kick off from around the 25 now. Mm hmm and, and, Jason, that long pass came from a team that's averaging 201 yards rushing per game this year. <laughs> Go figure. <laughs> it's 2020, right? <laughs> I mean, but but you and I were talking about this, watching them warm up, and yeah. we just kind of looked at each other and said, they look, both teams, really look good throwing the football. Yeah. Pretty decent kick. He kicks it to the other 25. Not bad. Here's a return here. That is by – He's got the edge. Number four, Reynolds, and a great return here. 
And so a big play by South Pike and Reynolds, the starting running back, as you look at the KDMC replay. Reynolds takes the ball, takes it over, turns that corner, and there's one guy trips him up again, Jason, or else he was off to the races again, and he was able to get around that corner. The ball is placed at the 43-yard line of North Pike across plus the 50-yard line in plus field position. Incredible field position. So both teams have – now started a possession on the other side, on their opponent's side of the field. North Pike had that advantage. Their first possession and tackled in the backfield for a loss. Reynolds had nowhere to go. And guess who? There's that big youngin again, yes, Ladarian Felder. Ladarian Felder, he's right there. And uh, you look he's going to be tough to deal with all night long. He's sitting right over top of the center. Young man gets off the ball quick. He uses his hands. Great job there. He run that down from behind. Second down, 11. Shotgun formation here for your quarterback, Royal. Going to hand to Reynolds again. He's in trouble trying to reverse his field, and he's got nowhere to go. Major losses coming up with the tackle. Wow. Is number nine, Fred Lewis, the senior Rover linebacker. 6'2", 235, and Jason, he closed in a hurry when he got out there. Man. He was going to try and cut back and go back against the grain, and he is uh, – they've gone back. They've lost a bunch of yards here. It's this will be down. third and 11, 12, 17. At least 17, yeah, 17 or 18. A cheap taxi cab ride. Royal's going to fake, and he's going to keep. He's got a long way to go. Royal fighting for that yardage, carrying Fumble. folks with him. And did the ball come out? Uh don't know. I think he just picked up the first down. I think he's no. short. No. No, they've got him marked two yards shy. Do you go? Be fourth and two. Uh, I, I think so. I think you got an opportunity <laughs> right here. Lane he, Kiffin has ruined it for all. We, we want to go on fourth, fourth down. And anything two. under 10 yards, we're right, going for it. Right? right. I love that style, though. Yeah. Aggressive. Fourth and two. What will they do? Royals got Reynolds to his left shoulder. He's got J.J. Martin to the left, and I want to say that that's Elsie. You've got a tackle eligible in the backfield. They call a timeout oh, now. Man. South Pike will call a timeout to discuss this. Jason, you had the heavy set in. You had number 50 in the ball game, lined up as an H-back as an eligible receiver, and they were fixing to pound the ball. I guess we'll step aside and take it with them. Let's step aside for 30 seconds here on the Spirit Media Network. During times of uncertainty, it's comforting to know we have a healthcare system in our community that's been committed to supporting us for well over a century. In this current time, we are standing together and our bond is stronger than ever. KDMC, caring for our community like no one else can. Welcome back with you as on that fourth down, a short play. South Pike goes for it, and they are denied. Guess who makes the tackle? Number Felder. 10, Ladarian Felder. He's been everywhere tonight. Young man's already had a pretty good game just in the first quarter, Jason. How about that? Uh, the South Pike Eagles turned the ball over on downs. North Pike's got an opportunity to come out here. I wouldn't be surprised to see him take another shot or, or, or take a deep crossing route right here. I think so, huh? These two teams have been battling for a long time. South Pike leading the all-time series 25-14. We told you South Pike they won the last two. Here's an end around coming near side. That's out. No, it's going to be a double pass down the field. Caught! Did At he the get the foot 40 down? 40-yard line. He did. What a play. The end around coming near side. And the receiver pulls up, throws downfield, complete to Zamaria Fountain. Fountain. KDMC, or excuse me, Mississippi had first down. And what a big play there as you look at the KDMC replay. Tell you what, jet sweep, he gets out on the edge, a lot of pursuit, and number 14 just throws it up for us right there. And that's Jacoby Matthews. So it'll be first and 10 for the Jaguars at the South Pike 40-yard line. Jason, for two teams that have been programmed to run the football as way they have this year, mm -hmm. an awful lot of balls in the air. Yeah, no doubt. 
So big play here. Pistol formation as they hand off to Montgomery. Montgomery a tough run. Montgomery inside the 30. Slam down inside the 25. And it is enough for a Mississippi Ag first down. Just a zone read right there. Lays in the belly of Montgomery. He takes it, finds a little seam, cuts back, and he carries the ball, Jason, down to about the 23-and-a-half, 24-yard line of South Pike. They'll set up a first and 10. So North Pike kind of going back to the, the bread and butter. It's an empty set here, though, for McDowell. Now they're going to shift out, move the tight end to the far side. McDowell. Going to be a quarterback run all the way. McDowell popped and the ball's loose, but I think North Pike got back on it. Boy, he was popped, and that football came loose. As we look at the KDMC replay here, he was fortunate. Yeah, he takes it around the end. He gets popped pretty good, and just fortunately, the Artrell Coney, the guard, is laying right there, falls down on the football, maintains possession. That'll bring up second down and 10. No gain on the play. Second down and nine. They actually gained half a yard. Back to passes. McDowell wants to air it out. End zone. Got a man. Incomplete. Looks like he had – he was trying to go for Lewis again, but he had Zamaria Fountain. He was more open, had more separation. Incomplete. And, Jason, you know, this is twice he's thrown into two deep double coverage, mm -hmm. and he's got confidence that his guy's going to go up and get it. And he's putting it where he can go get it. Yeah. I mean, he's not throwing it, throwing on the line. He's throwing up where he can go, go get the ball at its peak, and you know, very well coached right there by that receiver. Does a great job. Third down and ten now. They've got trips to the near side. The ball is just inside the 25. Seven nothing. It's North Pike on top of South Pike, and I think we're going to have a timeout on the field. Coach Mock is. Let's just say he's a little upset. We'll take the break with him. 7 nothing. North Pike on top of South Pike. Back in 30 seconds on the Spirit Media Network. When it comes to cooking meals, drying clothes, heating water, and my home, nothing beats natural gas from Centerpoint Energy. It's my most affordable energy option. It costs less to use than electricity, propane, and heating oil. So if you already have natural gas, keep it. If you're replacing an appliance, choose it. Natural gas, your best choice. Safe and affordable, rest assured. For more on the benefits of a natural gas home, visit centerpointenergy.com slash natural gas benefits. Centerpoint Energy, always there. So a big third down play coming up here for North Pike. They lead seven to nothing. And in, in a football game where both teams run the football quite a bit, it's a touchdown pass here tonight that's the difference so far. It really is, and it's been it's been the balls flying in the air, Jason. It's really kept the ball in possession of North Pike and kept them on the plus side of the field in South Pike territory. Pistol formation here for McDowell. He's going to – have a quick pass far side first down and more. Twisting and turning inside the 10-yard line, down inside the KDMC red zone, first and goal at the seven-yard line for North Pike. He, he hooks up with Lewis on the slant play, and he just takes the ball and just finds the seam and continues to turn and move his legs. And next thing you know, he's down inside right about the five, six-yard line, first and goal. For the Jaguars. I love the call because you know you're going to have an aggressive defense with South Pike, so just take that slant route that's open and mm -hmm. get what you can. And he turns it into a Mississippi Act first down inside that KDMC red zone. We're still here in this first quarter. North Pike looking to add to their 7 nothing lead. What a spin move there by Montgomery, but he is in trouble. And still on his still feet. On his feet. How in the world did they he get away? Blew oh, they it called dead. it dead. Blew it dead. Oh, I don't like that. Oh, oh I don't like that. Tylen, to, Ty, number six, <laughs> Tylen Batiste blows that up at the line of scrimmage. And had they let that play out, that was fixing to be interesting going toward the other corner over there because he had completely gotten spun away from the tackle, but they had blown it dead. And I I understand why they blew it dead. I, I don't like it, but I understand it because mm -hmm. his forward progress had been stopped, but his feet were still moving and he was not in the grasp. I do not like that. Second 13 coming no. up. Just let it play out. See what happens. Man in motion. And it's going to be the man in motion. Matthews on the end around and not much to do. And he is going to be met rudely 
on that far side by the South Pike defense. It'll bring up third and goal from just inside the 10 around the nine-yard line. Yeah, young man stopping that play out there was uh, Quan Lipscomb. And he stretched it out and got some help when the pursuit got there and they cleaned it up and he did exactly what you need to do. That's going to bring up a third and 10, looks like. Or well, third like, and goal. It's yeah. going to be third and goal. And I think they got South Pike to jump. Yes. Uh, you do see a flag on the far side there. Yep, going to be offside. Good shot by Pete upstairs. We'll talk about our crew real quick. Newman Kazari running things here tonight. Our technical director, Chris McDonald, on the field with our wireless camera. We're trying to get that straightened out for you, folks. And Peter Kazari up top. David Culpepper in the press box with yours truly, Jason Scarborough. Glad that you're with us tonight. Third down, they've got a stacked formation. The handoff is to Montgomery trying to lean forward. He's got a long way to lean. Gets to the three-yard line. you got to think here. I mean, their field goal – Attempts on the year is just one for three. You got to think they're going here. Yeah, you would think Reggie Bonds, number 25, and number seven, Brennan Fielder, both of those young men stepping up in the hole and clogging that up. And that brings up fourth and goal. And it looks like they're going for it. There's I no, love it. There's no kicker. I love it. Well, they've only attempted three field goals all year, and they've only made one of them. The empty set is interesting here. Empty set, play clock down to six seconds. You've got McDowell by himself. McDowell, quick pass here near side. That's Lewis trying to get to the corner, and he's there. Touchdown. A two-touchdown night for Lewis so far. And North Pike stretches their lead to 13-0. The extra point coming up. Jason, nothing really complicated right there. You know, it, he just kind of flares out, still in the backfield. He raises up, pops him. He's got three guys out there blocking for him and secure the corner and he goes in the corner of the end zone, touchdown Jaguars, pending the PAT. This will be 14-0 North Pike. Extra point is up, and it is no good. So the extra point's no good. And with that, we'll take a break. 13-0 North Pike on top of South Pike. We're back in 30 seconds on the Spirit Media Network. The Spirit Media Network is providing coverage of sports, faith, and entertainment like no one else in Mississippi and the Deep South. No other media outlet touches all the bases as we do, from the Friday night lights to rubbing shoulders with the biggest names in college athletics. Be sure to follow us on our multiple platforms, including Facebook, Twitter, our YouTube channel, and by downloading our Roku slash smart TV channel, Spirit Live. Check out our website at spiritmedianet.com for upcoming projects and broadcasts. And stay up to date with what's happening on the Spirit Media Network, where we're changing the game. Back with you here at Southwest Mississippi Community College as two minutes and change here in this first quarter. David, is 13-0 North Pike. Two passing touchdowns for a team that... Averages over 200 yards rushing per game. It's just what we expected, right? Absolutely it was. Kickoff is kicked, received. It will actually roll into the end zone, and South Pike will bring the ball back out to the 20, and we'll have that offense come for South Pike come back out. And, Jason, they really have not been able to get anything going passing or running. Mm -hmm. You know, North Pike's defense has really kept them shut down and kept this quarterback for – uh, South Pike, kind of check. Royals, you know, 405 yards, four TDs on, on the year passing, but he's got 370 yards rushing on the season on 79 carries. So, But they've been able to keep him in check. Mm -hmm. and it's going to be interesting to see what they do with our uh, good friend there, Mr. Ladarian Felder, <laughs> number 10 in the middle. He's been the big chicken award winner so far tonight. You know, Wayne Mackin gave us an award that, we're gonna we're gonna have to find a golden chicken to start handing. I out. think we just need to find a uh, fried chicken, put him in a box, ah, and hand him out at the end of the game. I like that idea. Just a bucket of fried chicken. Just a bucket of fried chicken. I love it. Who doesn't like fried chicken? Yeah, fine. Yeah. Fine. Newman says, yeah. How do you not like fried chicken? Chester's fried chicken. Yeah. That's gonna back the Eagles up, Jason. False start on the offense there. That's the penalties gonna... have killed them so far, David. Yeah, it really has. It really has. 
So this will put Royal and his offense in kind of a tough spot here. First and 15, Royal's going to drop to pass. Quick pass here near side. Airmails it over the head of his intended receiver. I want to say that's Brandon Johnson, and it is. Second yes. down and 15 now. Brandon Johnson wide open out in the flats right about where the numbers are. And uh, North Pike had a blown coverage right there. Had he able to reel that in, he, he turns it up the sideline for a significant gain. Instead, it's going to bring up a second and 15. Uh, from their own 15-yard line. Empty set once again. Twins to the left and to the right. Royal straight drop. Throws over the middle, and it's it, almost intercepted. Did he hang is, on to it? It is intercepted. It is intercepted. On the interception, let's see if we can number pick up the number. Number 25, Maurice Walker, a junior, 5'8", junior. Oh, now they're saying incomplete. Oh, oh no. And a flag. Yeah. Well, the coach is out beyond the hash mark yes. <laughs> for North Pike. Look at the KDMC replay here. Holds it, bobble. Oh. I saw a bobble at the end there. Yeah. So, uh, Matthew Mock, the first-year head coach for North Pike. First of all, I credit him for wearing short sleeve tonight. That's, that's gutsy. I like it. It is, but uh, it's probably because he's a little hot under the collar right now. He can yeah. probably have on some gym shorts, but, you know, he and the official, head official, are having a conversation at the 40-yard line. They're, you know, discussing what Sunday school lesson's going to be sure. Sunday. <laughs> and uh, he's trying to make sure they understand they need to be there. and <laughs> Turn the cheek. <laughs> you think that's the lesson? He is not happy. And I don't blame him. I mean, that that could have been a very pivotal play right there to, to, to help them get where they need to be. And, Jason, I'm going to tell you what, I'm very impressed with this North Pike oh, absolutely. Uh, football team. They're playing very, very hard. So – what do you? Th what could the flag be? Is what I'd like to know. You think it's against Coach Mock for uh, sideline yeah. warning? Sideline warning. Okay. Well, this is going to bring up another third and fifteen. And it appears well, apparently the sideline warning didn't work because he's no. back out on top of the numbers. It's pretty entertaining. Coach Mock just he just. I loved our conversation this week. Of course, Coach Brinson Wall over at South Pike, you know, we got a chance to talk to him quite a bit last year when we came down for the Macomb-South Pike game here at Southwest Mississippi Community College and just really enjoyed Coach Mock and the conversation, just learning about his team, learning about what he wants to instill here. Of course, he spent nine seasons at South Panola, of course, picked up a lot of great knowledge and experience there and he's brought that to North Pike and like you said it's been an impressive showing here in this first quarter and he is getting his money's worth Mr. Culpepper. Uh, he is and, and I'm not sure what this conversation's about it's not quite as well now they're marking off looks like it's going to be a 15 yard automatic first down wow penalty the penalty is against North Pike I thought it was just a sideline warning I think if you get if you get a sideline warning on what your second or third, it's uh, well. I think they gave the they gave the motion earlier personal foul. So I don't know if something happened. Interesting. Uh, post non interception, which would have been an incomplete pass, dead ball. Back to pass is Royal. The ball is batted down, and give credit. Guess who batted it down? Uh, yeah, number ten, Mr. Felder. This is a kid that's everywhere tonight. You see him at that nose guard spot. He just sticks his big paw up there and knocks it down. No problem. Well, I take that back. That was number 20 that knocked that down. It wasn't well, number 10. It was number 20. Well, Cavius Bates, a left defensive end. It's a 3-4 look here for North Pike. His Royal back to pass. Ball's tipped in the air, and it is intercepted this time. Tipped in the air and picked off by North Pike, and it's returned to the 25-yard line. Well, after the perceived interception and the penalty mark off, North Pike comes up with the play after all. Fred Lewis, inside linebacker, nice size young man, 6'2", 235. You know, ball's tipped. He does what he's supposed to do. He goes and gets it out of the air and tucks it away and takes off. And Jason, last drive, he had a play out there on, on, on the running back in open field where he, he was able to track him down and corral him. He's having a great game tonight as well. This is crazy. North Pike could go up by three scores. Yes. On this possession. And their two scores came by way through the air. A team that's backwards pass. 
Here's Montgomery. Montgomery looking for blockers, and he's going to skip out of bounds inside the 25, close to the probably, I'm going to say the 22-yard line. So a minimal game, but you don't want negative yards right. after a turnover for sure. I can tell you right now that play's setting up for something later on in the ball game because that was a you know flare-out quarterback turnaround, threw it a little bit behind him. So you could be looking for a double pass coming later on in the game with that play being run right there. But, you know, really, hey, it's positive yards, and they'll take it. Shotgun once again from McDowell. He's going to send Lewis in motion to the far side. Quick pass, and it's backwards and falling down and making the catch is Lewis. That's going to be a loss on the play behind the 30. Back and, to around the 33, David. And Brennan failure, number seven for South Pike, right there, read it, followed him, and it was just a dead giveaway what was going on. That play really never had a chance because he had two defenders out there and they had the angle on him. So that's going to bring up a long third down and about 14. Looks, looks like it's about 14 or 15. As we are winding down here in this first quarter, only 60 TikToks left. In an impressive quarter for North Pike. Tunnel screen coming back the other side, trying to pick up block, stretching inside the 30, lunging for that 28-yard line on the reception. That's Jacoby Matthews. They're going to be well short of that first down, but if I had to guess, I mean, they went, they hit a big play on third and 26 for a touchdown. Why not go for it on fourth down and 12? Yeah, if, you know, if you're going to go for it on fourth and 26, what's fourth and 15 <laughs> or fourth and 12? <laughs> <laughs> oh, that'll be easier. No problem, right? Well, we call a running play on that one. <laughs> but the offense is out there. You know, one back set. They're looking like they want to take a timeout. I think they're going to take a timeout here. I think they will, too. Play clock is down to two seconds, and, yeah, they do take a timeout here. We'll keep it here with only five seconds left in this first quarter. Do a little reset for you. Jason, do you – right here, do you punt the ball? Or do you go for it? Because if you punt it, just do a pooch punt, you could really pin South Pike deep. And yep. they have not been able to to run to move the ball up and down the field at all. Let me ask you this. Do you think that South Pike has abandoned their running attack a little too early? I mean, we're here in the first quarter, and they went guns a-blazing on a couple of possessions in a row yeah. with four wideout. Yeah, I mean, you got a lot of football left to play. And, and there's no reason to, to abandon the game plan of running the football in what got you to this point in the season yeah. anyway that got you to, to a five and two mark. So, you know, you've got to be able to, to stick with your, gut, your game plan and be able to do what you need to do. Be who you are. Be true to who you be are. Be who you are. It'll be interesting to see. Well, the two scores have come off passing plays for the Jaguars of North Pike. To get us to this point with five seconds left to go in the first quarter, it is fourth and 12. Empty set. Fourth down and 12. Man in motion to the far side is Matthews. It's going to be – they were setting up the double reverse, it looks like, but a flag comes in. It's going to stop the play. They did run the clock. It'll be interesting if they do a an untimed down. That's going to make it fourth and 17. 17, 18, yeah. Uh, that pooch punt idea sounds pretty good about right now. Yeah, they, put they gonna... three seconds back on the clock. Okay. I think there was three, uh, three, uh, three to four second differential between the play clock and the game clock, and it does look like they will be punting the football. I like this decision here. Try to, like you said, pin them, pin them deep. Get them at about the inside the five yard line. A little pooch punt here. It's a fake. Oh, they're going to go down the field, and it's knocked away. One-on-one -on -one coverage. How about that? And Coach Monk beside himself as we end the first quarter. Coach Monk thought it was interference, and a one-on-one -on -one play there is knocked away by South Pike. And that's how we end here in this first quarter of play. We'll look at the KDMC replay at the end of the first quarter here. Great play by Tyron Stewart. Came over out of nowhere to really break that pass play up. Matthews was an intended receiver. And Coach Mock is still arguing his point that he wanted defensive pass interference. So South The Spirit Media Network is providing coverage of sports, faith, and entertainment like no one else in Mississippi and the Deep South. 
No other media outlet touches all the bases as we do, from the Friday night lights to rubbing shoulders with the biggest names in college athletics. Be sure to follow us on our multiple platforms, including Facebook, Twitter, our YouTube channel, and by downloading our Roku slash smart TV channel, Spirit Live. Check out our website at spiritmedianet.com for upcoming projects and broadcasts. And stay up to date with what's happening on the Spirit Media Network, where we're changing the game. Back with you here at Southwest Mississippi Community College as the South Pike Eagle offense is going to take over now after the fake punt by North Pike. Well, you got to give credit to Coach Matthew Mock here. He is – he's letting the officials know he did not agree with that call. Yeah. He has uh, been a very active person on the sidelines. Quick pass far side is incomplete. They're trying to get it to Reynolds out in space, but it's incomplete. Royal has had a little bit too much Tabasco on a couple of passes tonight. Incomplete second down and ten. Really has, and that pass was intended out there for number four, Cam Reynolds. And, Jason, again, as we talked at the end of the first quarter – it's way too early to be abandoning your bread and butter. Mm -hmm. And they're just, you know, now they've put themselves in second and long. Second down and 10 now for the Eagles. Back to passes Royal again. He's flush from the pocket. Dumps it off. He's got a man open, complete across midfield. Inside North Pike territory. Coming up with it is J.J. Martin. That's only his third catch of the 2020 season. It's good enough for a Mississippi Ag first down. 6'3", 180-pound junior, really good-looking ball player, takes that ball, just finds the seam, sets down in it, sees his quarterback, does what he's supposed to do, catches it, turns the ball upfield for positive yards. I am still a bit shocked, like you said. They, they're they not running the football a whole lot. It's all these quick passes, another quick pass far so I don't want to say that that's Martin, again. Martin once again. So he has uh, doubled his – catch total of the season in the last two plays. And Jason, good looking young man, and he's got the height advantage out there. So you expect if you got something like that, a quick screen or a quick seam, he's going to be the target. But that brings up a second and five, second and four. Royal in the shotgun where he's been all night. He's going to take off on the quarterback keeper and be met rudely. Mm. Takes a lick there. By Fred Lewis. Fred Lewis. He was kind of waiting on him there in the hole, but it's enough for a Mississippi Ag first down. Nice run here by Royal. Royal takes the, the, the ball, quarterback draw, and just runs up, and he is rudely met. Even though it's enough yardage for the first down, Mr. Lewis takes care of business. First and ten here for the Eagles. Royal back to pass. Quick pass far side to Reynolds. Reynolds inside the 30, maybe the 29. Just a quick little out route. Yeah. Well, it looks like the game plan now for South Pike. They're just saying, hey, look, we'll uh, we'll take what you give us on these short passes and try to mix in some run along the way, although we, we really haven't seen a whole lot of handoffs here lately. And, you know, Justin, I really wonder if uh, Mr. Felder in the middle of number 10 has got something to do with this <laughs> <laughs> play calling sequence. Back to passes Royal. He's going to go here near side, incomplete. And, boy, South – Pike, they really want a, a flag here for interference. I just think that that was airmailed. Yeah. Brandon Johnson, the intended receiver, in between, he just goes down and just runs a little seam route down skinny post and goes up, and he's wanting pass interference, but the defender actually tipped the ball as it went over his head. So incidental contact, no flag on the play, and that's going to bring up a third and five. This has been a good drive for South Pike as well, so you hate to – to see it come up empty if you're a South Pike fan because this has been such a good drive. 50 is eligible in the backfield. Yeah, Back to pass is Royal. Royal wants to air it out, and it's going to be Deep. intercepted once again by North Pike. Number 17 for North Pike comes up on the play right there. Is that 17 or is that 13? I think that's 13, yeah. So that's going to be yes. Thomas May that comes up yep. with the interception. Thomas May comes up with the interception, safety, just floats over from his free safety spot and picks the ball off. Ball was under was severely underthrown. So that will set North Pike up at the eight-yard line, and they will have it first and ten, their first possession of the second quarter. 
Do you think Royal forced that one there? Oh, it absolutely. Kind of like he forced it. Yeah, he did. He forced it. I mean, he two deep coverage right there had a man over the top and the man underneath, and the man underneath picked the ball off, and the throw was short on top of that. I may have kept Royal running the football there as here's Montgomery in a lot of trouble, and he is swallowed up in the backfield for a loss. He really is, and number 46 there for South Pike comes in and cleans up the havoc. I don't have – yeah, Zedrick Washington. The freshman. Yep. Good-looking freshman, too. Yeah, no doubt. Zedrick, 23, 23 tackles on a year. Six foot, 215. He's still got some growing – some growing room, as they say. Mm -hmm. Second down and 12 now. Standing in the end zone are McDowell and Montgomery. And the shotgun is McDowell. He's back to pass, wants to air it out here near side. One-on-one -on -one coverage incomplete through that one. Too far into the boundary for his receiver, Matthews. Matthews. And pass was defended there by number 17 for South Pike, and that is uh, Isavius Crosley. Crosley's been a tough defensive matchup for any receiver just about this year. He's had a good season, the senior. 32 tackles and six TFLs, a fumble recovery and an interception. Jason, this is going to bring up third and long. Let's see what North Pike does here. They turn fate to Montgomery. McDowell in trouble. He's Fumble. hitting the football is loose. The football is loose. South Pike says that they have it, and they do. Dude. It's a touchdown. The Eagles get a defensive score. As McDowell was in trouble, he was hit. The ball came loose, and South Pike is on the board. Brennan Felder recovers the fumble in the end zone. It's a fake up the middle to Montgomery, and it, the pocket just collapses mm. at number 46. Washington. D cleater. Woo. Can you say D cleated? Mm. I mean, just mashed the quarterback. Ball comes out, and hey, number seven, Brennan Felder falls on the ball. Now it looks like they're going for two. Yeah, they don't kick a whole lot of extra points. Neither one of these teams. I mean, North Pike, they, they've lined up for a couple of extra points tonight. One for two on those extra point attempts. A lot They're of confusion They're going to end up here. calling timeout, and they do, take their second timeout of the ball game. So timeout, South Pike, we will take it with them as the Eagles on the board, 13-6. They're going for two when we come back in 30 seconds here on the Spirit Media Network. Need your business to stand out and pop? Then it's time to visit Polshaps Screen Print and Embroidery in Brandon. Polshaps can custom design your marketing campaigns with custom screen printing, embroidery, and promotional materials that set you apart from the competition. Speaking of setting apart, Polshaps does all their work in-house from start to finish. No outsourcing, meaning faster turnaround time and lower prices for you, the customer. Visit Polshaps.com to find out more and get started on standing out. Back with you here at Southwest Mississippi Community College. That's a mouthful, but I always like coming to this place because we always get the kind of game we've got so far here tonight. Yeah, and, you know, but both of the community colleges here in Southwest Mississippi do a great job. They really do. they got great facilities and uh, always very hospitable. So they are going for two. They, South Pike, who just got a fumble recovery in the end zone on a quarterback sack for the touchdown, and the two-point conversion is no good. So here's what we've had so Guess far. Guess who's in on the tackle. Yeah, go all the way, All the way out in the flats, number 10, <laughs> Felder. <laughs> Called his name quite a bit tonight, haven't we? We have, we have. Ladarian's had a night so far, so we'll, we'll keep it here. 13-6 is your score, North Pike. So here's what we've got so far with 8.46 to go here in this uh, first half. North Pike, a team that averages 200 rushing yards a game, two passing touchdowns. South Pike, a team that averages 300 yards, right at 300 yards of offense per game. The majority of it coming on the ground, 233 rushing yards a game. They've been shut out offensively, but now they just score a defensive fumble recovery for a touchdown. I yeah. mean, everything that you think about how this game was going to go in terms of what areas would be highlighted? That's out the window. Yeah, and it's it, it, and I guess it's just fitting for 2020 that you know it's it's this way. And I'm gonna tell you what, Jason, we talked about it early, you know, pregame. The team that is able to 
overcome their weakness. And the team that can do the things and do them well when they need to will be the team that wins this ball game. This game's far from over with 8.51 left to go in the second quarter here. You've got a lot of football left here. And we've got uh, South Pike teeing this thing up, fixing to kick it off. And they don't expect him to kick it much further than the 15-yard line. No, they really don't. Got the return men, three return men set up around the 15, a high end over end kick. Going to be taken near the 20. So they were set up in the right spot, juking and jiving here. I want to say that that's going to be Matthews on the return. He's near the 30, but cut down a little shy around the 28-yard line. That is where South Pike on offense will take over now. And this is going to be interesting to see what North Pike comes up with because now they don't have that two-touchdown cushion. South Pike's gaining on them a little bit. It's a one-score game, so you wouldn't think that that would put pressure, but you never know with 16-, 17-, 18-year-old kids. So. Yeah, and, you know, Jason, here's the thing. Defensive, defensively, South Pike's got a little bit of their swagger back. How, can, how does North Pike respond to this? Do they go out and continue to do the things that they've been doing, or do they change it up? Shotgun for McDowell as it's going to be a quick pass here near side and climbing the ladder to try to pull it down is Matthews. Incomplete. Good coverage here on the near side by South Pike's number 17, Crossley. And ball goes up. Crossley comes in from the backside and just hammers the ball through to the ground. And he also had help there from Stewart, the safety, coming over as well. So just a quick slant, gave him a little room, and good defensive effort by Crossley to knock the ball out. Second and 10 for North Pike, 13-6. What a game so far. As the Jaguars trying to snap this two-game skid to South Pike, and I believe Coach Mock just had to take his, I want to say that that's his final time out of the half, and he burns it here, so we will burn it with him. Timeout on the field, 13-6 North Pike. On top of South Pike, back at 30 seconds here on the Spirit Media Network. A smile is one of the first things most people notice. And for over a decade, Germany Dental has helped change smiles for thousands of people across Mississippi. I was so embarrassed about my teeth that I never smiled. But now that I have dental implants and cosmetic veneers from Germany Dental, I can't stop smiling. My decision to see Dr. Germany literally changed my life. Germany Dental, changing lives one smile at a time. Call 601-825-4746 today. 13-6 says, I think that's North Pike's final timeout, isn't it? I believe it is. I know they burned two in the first quarter. Second and 10 coming up for the Jaguars. Man in motion to the near side. They're going to give it on that end around, coming near side to the 30, spinning, getting out of some trouble. What a move there. Wow. Mm. Out across the 35 to the 36 on the end around is Jermarius Lewis. What a night he's having so far. Two touchdown catches and a big run here. And Crosley and Bonds combined for the tackle. And just a great move because had he not spun and started upfield, there was a young man coming from South Pike <laughs> that was fixing to knock him for about four-yard loss and take a knee with him. Third down and one now for the Jags. They do have Montgomery back in the game. He has not been a factor so far. you got to think that's going to change as the night progresses. The handoff to Montgomery, stiff arm, trying to get away. He does first down, lowering the head, and gets out of bounds here about the 42-yard line on the near side. It's enough for a Mississippi Ag first down, and the Jags keep the chains moving. Yeah, Montgomery takes the ball, goes up the middle, Stiff arms a defender, bounces it to the outside, and Crosley wrestles him up and gets him out of bounds, but after he gains the first down. Twins to the left and to the right. Pistol formation for McDowell. As they are perfectly fine with a seven-point lead and running that clock as we tick inside seven minutes in this first half. A little play action here. Throw over the middle. Beautiful route here and turning it up the field quickly is the receiver for North Pike. Can he get to the end zone? No, he's going to be tackled inside the KDMC red zone. Mississippi Ag first down and I want to say on the reception that's number 16. Guess who? 
Jermarius Lewis. And he is run down by Tyron Stewart. Just a little hook route, caught the ball in the seam, turned it upfield, and he had a blocker out there, and he used his blockers and used the angle. And number 20, Tyron Stewart, comes down and runs him down from behind and runs him out of bounds inside the five-yard line. How about that? Lewis is just having a phenomenal night so far. Unbelievable. Doing a great job. So North Pike looking to go back up by two scores here. Low snap, handoff to Montgomery, spinning towards the goal line. He's going to be stopped short here as it will be second and goal now. Young man making the play there, number 53, Ivy Pittman for the Eagles. And, Jason, how about North Pike? When they get down there where they have to run the football, they go back to what they do well, mm -hmm. and that's run the football. And they, and they really have not abandoned that yet. They have stuck, stuck with the running game. It's been a nice mix by the offensive staff for North Pike. Been a really nice mix. Roundhouse this is strange. Backfield. Yeah, how about that? Montgomery, little jump step. Goes under center. Can he get to the corner? A race there. Did he get there? The official says no. He's down at the, what, one-inch line? Yes. Wow. I thought he hit the pie line. We'll look at the KDMC replay, David. You tell me what you see. He stretches it out, and the defenders are there, and Ooh. I'm not so sure he wasn't in the end zone right there. He has run out of bounds by Stewart. Crosley and a whole host of Eagles. And I'm going to tell you what, uh, that was a strange looking play. Well, they've got a injured South Pike Eagle on the field. We got Chris McDonald in the box with us. He said touchdown. We're getting Chris fixed up for our KDMC Spirit Cam. Hopefully have that back for you in the second half. We, we all kind of signaled touchdown. Yeah. And, <laughs> and Jason, we're really lucky because we had an opportunity there for a holding flag on the outside there. Number 21, Kate Rush, had a young man hogtied, <laughs> and the official <laughs> missed it. So I want to say that's going to be – that's going to be Zedrick Washington. He's had a, a big night. He has. I hope he's okay. He looks to be – Looks like he'll be fine. He's just, yeah. you know, he'll – Looks like he'll return to the ball game, getting a little assistance coming off. We wish looking, him well. That's a good-looking football player. It's a good-looking freshman. Yeah. Yeah, Coach Brinson Wall knows how to knows how to grow him. Ball is placed inside the one. I, I, Jason, I think if you move it a half inch, it's <laughs> across the line. Full house backfield. It's going to be the quarterback trying to keep it, and he is in. We're going to say it for him. Touchdown, North Pike. McDowell just kind of pushed across the line there and the touchdown for North Pike as they will attempt the conversion. There's a look at the entire team pushing McDowell into the end zone. Well, they brought number nine, Fred Lewis, a linebacker, 6'2", 235 in to set up in the backfield and he got a, a little push. Yeah, just a little bit. Through. So it'll be Brown attempting the extra point. He's one for two on the night. Got one and missed one. Here's a snap to hold, and the kick is up, and it is good. So it's 20-6, to six, North Pike back up by two touchdowns with 534 here in this first half. We'll step aside for 30 seconds here on the Spirit Media Network. During times of uncertainty, it's comforting to know we have a health care system in our community that's been committed to supporting us for well over a century. In this current time, we are standing together, and our bond is stronger than ever. KDMC, caring for our community like no one else can. Back with you here at Southwest Mississippi Community College in a pretty good turnout here considering it's cold outside. <laughs> yeah, a little breezy. Aren't you glad we're packed in here warm and cozy? I am, and, you know, I have done some of these where you're sitting out in the open on the bleachers, <laughs> and uh, those are always fun. We, we've done those, too. Me and McDonald, he's in here shaking his head. Newman's been out here in the elements as well, yeah. Jason, how impressive was it for North Pike to take that drive after they gave up the, the touchdown on defense to, to answer? Pretty impressive. We've been impressed with North Pike 
all night as Johnson returns the kick here for South Pike. Gets out across the 25-yard line. Close to the 26, and South Pike on offense now. Their defense, well, they've got six points for them so far tonight. The offense, they've got to respond. The offense needs to step up and, and get things moving, and I, I really think the way you do this is you keep Mr. Royal on the ground and you feed Johnson and, and you feed McNeil. Let those young men do what they need to do and, and put the balls in their hands and try and go back to what's gotten you to this point at 5-2 mm -hmm. and two in the season and playing for a district championship. You know, Reynolds came into the game with 96 carries as well, and he has not been a factor so far. And, again, they're going with an empty backfield here on this first down play. 20-6, back to pass is Royal. Wants to air it out. One-on-one -on -one coverage overshoots the intended receiver. Trying to hook up here with McNeil. You yeah. just mentioned getting him involved. That pass was out of his reach. Second down and 10. Yep, number 15 for the Cougars on, I mean, for the Jaguars on the defense there, defending the play. And I don't have him on my lineup sheet. Uh, number 15, North Pike, is Martavian Sanders, a sophomore. Good coverage there. Deep, looks like they're going back with another empty set, Jason. This is a bit shocking to me that they are not sticking with the run game a, a little bit more as the ball is going to be knocked away but able to get back on it is Royal. He was about to be sacked once again as this North Pike defense. That was Bates that got there that time. He's already got a pass deflection, and he's been in on a couple of assists tackling tonight. He really has, and just a great job of getting getting around the edge. And he beat the block on the outside and flushed Royal up, and he knocked the ball out, and Royal had to fall on it. Again, I'm – I mean, this brings up third and 13, third and 14, <laughs> and I'm just at some point uh, you're getting good pressure off the edges and up to up the middle. I mean, they've got five and they're rushing three, and the three's winning. And I like to ended up in another interception right there, incomplete. And now wow. the South Pike Eagles they're going to have to punt it right back to the North Pike Jaguars and North Pike. Up 20 to 6. Maurice Walker had one there that went through the breadbasket, or that would have been a pick six. It would have. Because yep. there was nobody between him and the goal line. And I'm, again, it, it, look, Coach Brinson Wall knows way more about offense and football than either of us in this booth. Oh, but for it, sure. But this is certainly, uh, I guess, puzzling at why they've completely gone away from the run. I mean, we could say it's because of Felder, the big nose guard for North Pike, because he's made a lot of plays tonight, but you would think you. I don't know. You run away from him. Here's the punt. Almost blocked. And is it is going flag to. flag down? Yes. There is a flag down going to take a. Question is, is that running into the kicker or roughing the kicker? Hmm. Because roughing will result in a first down, and running into will be another fourth down play. Here's the call from the. I think he says running. Number nine, four. North Pike runs into the kicker. That's Fred Lewis. Came hard off the edge, and, you know, they, they had a little pressure on him there. And, of course, if it's just running into, you'll take that because it's still fourth down and long. And yeah. You, you still stand to get fantastic field position if you're North Pike. Well, South Pike's got the option to, to either take or decline this penalty. Uh, if they take it, they'll move the ball up five yards and punt it again if it's running in two. Do you do you punt it again with yeah. the kind of pressure that, that North Pike was able to get? Yeah. Okay. Because it was not a very good punt. Uh, the ball right now is on the plus side of the field at the 47-yard line. And Coach Wall is having a discussion here. And it looks like they're going to decline the penalty and take ah, it there. Interesting. Yeah, that's exactly what he did. I think that this is just my opinion. I think that maybe he said, you know what, they got a little too much pressure on that last punt, and I'm going to, I'm going to take my chances with the ball resting at the 47. Depend that's a lot of pressure to put on that defense, though. Yeah. And it's, uh, boy. <laughs> 
It could get really ugly really quickly yeah, here. This thing could get out of hand pretty quick here at the half. And, you know, South Pike has really not shown any uh, ability to, to be able to move the ball on North Pike at all. Now, you and I both know that this high school football oh, it can in the second half, it's like the scripts flip. Oh, yeah. Things could change in a hurry. And speaking of that, North Pike decides to go empty here on this first play. Of this possession, you got trips to the far side, the tight end to the near side. Play clock, plenty of time at 20 seconds. McDowell, who's got a touchdown run tonight, quick pass far side. Caught, advancing upfield. Guess who? Matthews. Jacoby Matthews. You got a flag that comes in at the end of the play as well. And I think they're going to get holding on the far side, maybe by one of the receivers downfield. Oh, that was a late flag. It really he was. was out. He was out of. He maybe a block in the back or something. But I'm gonna tell you what, the play was over before the flag was. Thrown. It was. It was. Here's a look at the KMC wow. replay. Let's see if we can pick it up. You got Newman pointing. You got Chris pointing. And it's a well, number. Five. I don't know come about on. that. Yeah, come on now. They called Fountain for the penalty. I didn't see a whole lot there. Well, the, the, he he was on the he was on the defender blocking him, and the defender turned as the guy was going out of bounds. Uh, technically, did he have, push him in the back at the end? Yes, nah. but the guy did was it out of bounds. Impact the play though. No, that's that's what frustrates me watching a game, doing a game. Did the penalty affect the play in any way? And if the answer to that is no. Why throw it? I understand you're trying to stay by the book and, and all that, but if it didn't affect the play, don't throw it. Quick pass over the middle, turning upfield quickly, getting that lost yardage back on the penalty. Guess who? It's Fountain who the penalty was called on. Yep. And he just thrust the ball over to the official in frustration. You know he's still hacked off about the penalty. Comes up with a big play here, second and nine coming up. And Derek Cotton in on the stop there for the Eagles. Again, just a little curl route, curls in, just finds a soft seam, sets down, he hits him, and he turns it up. i got to give credit to McDowell here. He has been sharp tonight, the sophomore. Takes a low snap here, quick pass, dangerous pass mm. in and out of the hands of Matthews, incomplete. They were trying to set up the tunnel screen, but the pass was a little too hot to handle for Jacoby Matthews. A little bubble screen out here on the right side, out in the flats. They've got got, got the blocking set up. but Ooh, That was set uh, up beautifully, it too. It was. It was set up to go, but the pass was high. But right in the middle of the mix out here for South Pike defense, number seven, once again, Brennan Felder. They're going to shift everybody, student body right. Oh, we got a flag for movement. No. No flag, and Royal's going to take it right up the gut and be met rudely by the South Pike defense. Minimal gain, it'll be fourth down. We'll say fourth down at eight. Coming up here for North Pike, and I would think with a two touchdown lead and just under four minutes before the half. That was Lewis taking the direct snap there. Ah, nice catch there, Mr. Cole Pepper. And uh, that's gonna bring up a fourth and eight. And I'm assuming they are punting here. Ball is resting at the 40. The nose is resting on the 45-yard line. I wonder, do you let this play clock run down, take the penalty, and then just boom it? I wonder if that's what they're doing. Play clock down to two seconds, one second. There it is. And, yep, you're going to have a del delay of game here. And it's going to back it up to midfield. So it gives you a little more room to play with here. Dragon win. I mean, he's... Been pretty effective on punts. He averages about 31 yards a punt on the season, and that's about what you want here. Just get it inside yep. the 20 if you're North Pike. If you're South Pike, you're hoping for a block or a big return. Here's mm. Wynn. Almost mm. has it blocked. Boy, that one goes straight up in the air. That ball's tipped. And takes a North Pike roll inside the 20. It'll be down at the 18. Goodness gracious, that was almost disastrous for North Pike and a big play for South Pike. Somebody on the offensive line forgot to block Woo! the young man for South Pike. <laughs> Number 37, Lipscomb, comes in, and he was on the verge of blocking that one. I think he just timed his jump wrong or else he had been all over it. <laughs> Wow. And South Pike, look, I give South Pike's defense and special teams are trying to give themselves a, a fighting chance here. 
Uh, the offense has got to get back on, on board here. And here's the thing, if I remember correctly, North Pike gets the football to start they do. the second half. So, because South Pike went three and out on their first possession. So, big possession here as the handoff going to go to, I believe that's Reynolds. Well, he pulled it, kept it. Well, that's going to be the quarterback, Royal. Gets up to the 20. Minimal gain. Uh, we'll say about three yards, second down at seven. Number three, Jadarius Robinson in on the tackle there. Second and seven coming up for the Eagles. And this is such a tough position to be in as a coach because you don't want to force a mistake. But by the same token, you got to get a score. You can't let this thing get out of hand. Yeah. As Royals back to pass, quick slant here near side, spinning his way out across the 30 or right at the 30. It should be close enough to a first down. On the reception is number five, Brandon Johnson. And Jackson Fortenberry comes in and mops up uh, <laughs> what Thomas May, the defensive back, had kind of stopped him up a little bit there, and he was trying to move forward, and Fortenberry came in and cleaned it up. That's going to bring up a first and ten. Mississippi Ag first down is Royal. Going to turn in hand here. And stretching it out to the boundary is Reynolds. Nice run here. Jumps over a bench. How about that? <laughs> Pretty athletic move. And he says, I'll just do it again for good measure. Here's a look at the KDMC replay. Good run here by just a Reynolds. Hand, hand off going around the end. They did a good job. Number 77 there, the offensive lineman. Very impressed with that. Uh, Jalen Carter, 5'11", 290. Guard out pulling, sealing the edge off. Second down at about four as they did stop the clock as Reynolds went out of bounds. Shotgun for Royal again. He's going to drop to pass. Throws, has a man. He was wide open and just airmailed it as he tried to hit McNeil, and McNeil is hurt, pounding the turf. Couldn't really see what happened there, but he was open, and the football was too tall for him. Here's a look at the KDMC replay. Slant route, receiver Ooh. goes up, defender comes in and gets him, uh, shall we say, in the um, yeah. lower area there. Lower I don't think it was. I don't think it was intentional, but it's one of those. Yeah, it's just you know, it is what it is, and <laughs> I thought it at hurts. First he was holding his hand, but that's no. not not what he's holding. So. No. Tell you what, we'll step aside here as they tend to the injured Derek McNeil. Hope he's going to be okay. We'll. Step aside for 30 seconds here on the Spirit Media Network. Hello, I'm Gary Jolly from the Tractor Store in Richland. Now's the best time of the year to save more with Mahindra. And it all starts with zero. Pay zero down and 0% interest up to 60 months. That's more for less on many of Mahindra's best-selling models. With tractors that deliver more lift, capacity, fuel efficiency, and built-in weight. So get zero down, 0% interest for up to 60 months on Mahindra. The world's number one selling tractor, Mahindra. Available at the Tractor Store in Richland. Back with you here at Southwest Mississippi Community College as it's 20 to 6, North Pike on top. Looks like Manil is going to be okay. As back to pass is Roy. Actually, they're going to get it to Reynolds here. Reynolds trying to get to that first down marker, and he's got it as he skips out of bounds close to the 45 yard line. They'll spot him at the 43. A Mississippi Ag first down. And Brantley Nunnery runs him out of bounds over there on the far side, Jason. Just a little dump pass to him out in flats and just let him get out in the open field and let his speed do the work. They pick up the first down, move the chains. You got 49 seconds left to go here in the second quarter. Shotgun formation once again for Royal. Back to pass, got time, dumps it off, incomplete, tries to throw down the seam. And he had Johnson open, but again, the pass was too tall. These receivers, give them credit, they're getting open for South Pine, but at times Royal is just too hot on his passes here. As you look at the KDMC replay, 
He's got Johnson open, but just too tall. And Lewis comes in and from, from the back a little late. But I'm going to tell you what, if he keeps throwing it high across the middle mm. like that, your receivers – are not going go to go to battle no. for you too many times because no. you've got some guys that are that are head hunting coming across the middle there. Mm -hmm. Hanging them out to dry, you can't can't do that too many times. Royal back to pass. It's going to be quarterback draw. Royal lowers his head. What a run! Wow, near midfield. And do they have any timeouts left? I don't think that they do. They're going to have to get in a little bit of a hurry here. Third down, and short coming up. Brantley Four. Nunnery in on the stop right there. Just, wow. Just bulldozed his way in, and he took the brunt of the hit from the quarterback. You're going to have trips to the near side. Empty formation for Royal. Back to pass. Quick pass here near side. It looks like it might. Was it tipped? That pass was awfully low. Intended receiver near side to Brandon Johnson, and it looked like it might have been tipped. Couldn't really tell from here. It's going to bring up fourth down and five. What does South Pike do here? Because if you turn it over on downs, you give it back to North Pike with a little bit of time on the clock here. It's about 10 seconds difference. Yeah. Well, clock is stopped at 26 seconds, but we got 10 seconds left on the game on the play clock. Royals back to pass. Going to keep on the quarterback keeper. He didn't get it. He did not get it. Got to the North Pike wow. 49, and he has stopped. Wow. And North Pike will take over on downs. We would look at the KDMC replay. Great pursuit by that Jaguar defense once wow. again. Wow. He had nowhere to go, David. He had nowhere to go. And young man steps up, number three right there. Uh, Dradarius Robinson steps up, plugs a gap. Now, if you're North Pike, do you take a shot? I say yes. I mean, why, why wouldn't you? Ball's at midfield. you got 19 seconds. You're out of timeouts. Uh, they may turn around and hand it off and be happy with the score, but they are going to take a shot. McDowell has the pass complete inside the 40 and then out of bounds. The Mississippi Ag first down at around the 37-yard line, so they'll have some time here. Young man there, number 21, is... He throws it out in the flats, just uh, just runs out in the flats, runs behind the linebacker, number 25 there for South Pike, just runs behind him and just sits down. Bonds turns around and pushes him out of bounds. It was Cade Rush on the reception, his sixth catch of the year. Back to pass is McDowell, the 6'3 sophomore, lets it go, has double coverage, almost caught. Wow. Again, throws in Double the coverage. Two deep double coverage with a man over the top, and Crosley's there alone. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> just I mean, he just runs down the seam. You gotta like the aggression here, though, though by Coach Matt Mock and by wow. McDowell to know that he's to know he's got that green light from his coach. Hey, if you see your guy and you got belief, throw it up there and let him get it. And twice that's paid off tonight. You know, I, every time he's throwing it up like that, it is it is. His guys had more than a 50% chance of coming down with the football. That's right. So this should be the final play. Nope. We got a flag that comes in. A false start. Nope. Timeout. Timeout. South, South Pike. Pike had a timeout to burn. So we will take it with them. 20 to 6. Final play of the first half coming up in 30 seconds on the Spirit. Media Network. The Outdoorsman Tractor Package is here at Mississippi Ag. Choose a 3 Series John Deere tractor tailored to your horsepower needs and get all the attachments you require for the fall in one convenient package, including a loader, disc, and spreader starting at $315 a month. And as always, you get it all covered by our 10-year warranty. With 0% financing for 60 months, it's a deal that is sure to help you get your food plots ready for the season. Some restrictions apply. See dealer for details. Offer expires 1031.9. Here in a minute. Final play coming up here in this first half that has been, for the most part, David Culpepper dominated by North Pike, and they have a chance here with three TikToks, and they get the ball back to start the second half. They've got a chance to pad the lead, a mm. second and ten inside the 40, and you got to think, you got to assume where they're going with the football. As McDowell takes the snap, drops the pass, pressure comes, he steps up, and he's going to take off and run and just say, you know what, why force it? I'm going to go out of bounds. 
heads up play by the sophomore there to say, you know what, we're up 20 to six, let's enjoy the lead and go in at the half up by two scores. Your halftime score, North Pike 20 to six over South Pike, looking to end a two game losing streak to the Eagles who have also won three straight region crowns, region title up for grabs tonight. Your thoughts on the first half? Totally unexpected, but yeah. very, very good play calling by North Pike. Very good job of the offense of, of taking advantage of uh, of opportunities because the majority of this first half has been played on the South Pike end of the field, Jason. And whenever you're able to do that, then you're able to take a few few chances that you normally wouldn't take by airing it out and doing some things that you want to do. The flip side of that is South Pike. Where's the running game? you, you got to have a running game if you're going to compete here. And – you're down 20 to 6. You're down 14 points. There's no need to abandon the run. You, you've got plenty of time to come back. And you mentioned it earlier. Are they afraid of our good friend there in the middle, number 10? <laughs> Mr. Felder. Mr. Yeah. Felder, because the young man is really doing a heck of a job tonight. Great game so far from Felder and this North Pike Jaguars football team. They've shut out the South Pike offense. The six points came on a defensive fumble recovery. It's 20 to 6 at the half. We'll take two minutes for our halftime break, and when we come back, it'll be the SEC update with the one and only Jason Crowder getting you all set for the big slate of SEC football games coming up tomorrow. 20 to 6, North Pike on top of South Pike, back in two minutes here on the Spirit Media Network. During times of uncertainty, it's comforting to know we have a health care system in our community that's been committed to supporting us for well over a century. In this current time, we are standing together and our bond is stronger than ever. KDMC, caring for our community like no one else can. When it comes to cooking meals, drying clothes, heating water, and my home, nothing beats natural gas from Centerpoint Energy. It's my most affordable energy option. It costs less to use than electricity, propane, and heating oil. So if you already have natural gas, keep it. If you're replacing an appliance, choose it. Natural gas, your best choice. Safe and affordable, rest assured. For more on the benefits of a natural gas home, visit centerpointenergy.com slash natural gas benefits. Centerpoint Energy. Always there. Hello, I'm Gary Jolly from the tractor store in Richland. Now's the best time of the year to save more with Mahindra. And it all starts with zero. Pay zero down and 0% interest up to 60 months. That's more for less on many of Mahindra's best-selling models. With tractors that deliver more lift, capacity, fuel efficiency, and built-in weight. So get zero down, 0% interest for up to 60 months on Mahindra. The world's number one selling tractor, Mahindra. Available at the tractor store in Richland. The Outdoorsman Tractor Package is here at Mississippi Ag. Choose a 3 Series John Deere tractor tailored to your horsepower needs and get all the attachments you require for the fall in one convenient package, including a loader, disc, and spreader starting at $3.15 a month. And as always, you get it all covered by our 10-year warranty. With 0% financing for 60 months, it's a deal that is sure to help you get your food plots ready for the season. Some restrictions apply. See dealer for details. Offer expires 10-31-19. I'm so sick of Bama. I hate Alabama so much. The dynasty is not over. Bama's dynasty has just begun. Roll Tide. Josh Jacobs gets the handoff, goes left, comes right, gets outside. He's to the five. He's going to go. Touchdown, Alabama. Saw your drops. He's hit and he's set. Thunder. Feel the thunder. Explosive performance from Mississippi State. Steve to Williams, right side. Is he in? Touchdown, Travion Williams, his second of the game. Aggies take a 20 0 lead. Thunder. SEC, 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 This is an SEC update, an inside look at Southeastern Conference football. Hello, everybody. God bless you, and thank you for tuning in. I'm Jason Crowder, your host. In a 48-17 win over Tennessee, Alabama running back Najee Harris pounds in three touchdowns, and quarterback Mac Jones throws for 387 yards to secure a 29th straight win versus the SEC East, and Nick Saban is now 23-0 versus former assistants. Mac under center, gives to Najee, cuts it up. 
upfield. He's in. Touchdown, Alabama. Najee Harris with a rushing touchdown in 12 straight games. The voice of the tide, Eli Gold, with a call from Learfield IMG College. In replacement of starting quarterback Miles Brennan, freshman T.J. Finley threw for 265 yards and two touchdowns, and he brings LSU to an even 2-2 two and two record with a much-needed win versus South Carolina 54-24. Head coach Ed Orcheron talked about his freshman QB. What you saw today is what we've been seeing all camp. I had total confidence in T.J. I had total confidence in Coach Hisman to call the right game. It was a great mix. Proud of T.J. Missouri's rushing attack and tough defense gets the Tigers over the hump to beat Kentucky 20 to 10 with two touchdowns from Larry Roundtree the third. In motion comes Roundtree. He'll line up in the pistol behind his quarterback Basilek. Running right, Roundtree gets a block for Parker. Touchdown, Missouri. He takes it to the house and with 45 seconds to play in the third, Missouri extends the lead to 16 to three. The voice of the Tigers, Mike Kelly with a call from Learfield IMG College. A quarterback, Bo Nix, hits wide receiver Seth Williams for a 42-yard touchdown pass with 1-11 remaining in the game in Oxford for what proves to be the game winner as Auburn beats Ole Miss 35-28. There's the snap. Nick drops, he looks, he throws it up the field. It's caught by Seth Williams, 45-30. He's down the sideline, 15-10-5. Touchdown, Auburn! Touchdown, Seth Williams! You don't need a flag, and you have to go for two on this one. But what a play, a little back shoulder throw to Seth Williams. A perfect throw by Bo Nix. Seth Williams spins and does the rest. The voice of the Auburn Tigers, Andy Burcham with a call from the Auburn Radio Network. Gus Mazan spoke with Network TV following the game. First of all, I'm, I'm real pleased the way we came over adversity. You know, we missed the extra point. They came and scored. They had the momentum. Uh, we went three and out. We had to punt. Our defense held. We got it back. Got some first downs. And then the back shoulder versus two man. You know, Bo made a really good throw. And Seth made a guy miss and went to the house. And I'm real proud of the way that uh, our guys overcame adversity. We talked about playing good, hard-nosed Auburn football. And and playing 60 minutes, like Coach Dow always talks about, we did that today. This has been an SEC Rewind. We'll preview this weekend's games when we return after this. The best years of your life, that's how college is often described. That flash of time when you set out and start to figure out who and where you were born to be. Trailblazer. Risk taker. Caretaker. The first time you feel a part of something bigger. And if you're lucky, those best years of your life, they last forever. Here, it just means more. We know a lot about them, they know a lot about us. This will be a huge test, though, against a team like LSU. It's going to be a war, it's going to be a great game. 511 yards, 48 offensive snaps. That's going to be really tough to replicate, I think, against this Auburn defense. Knicks steps up, he throws to Williams. He's got it! Touchdown, Auburn! Touchdown, Auburn! Here's the snap. Placement is down. Kick is up. Line drive, kick, and it's good! Tigers win! Tigers win! 22-21 on the road in jordan Hare. Whether it's played on the bayou or on the plains, this game is always a good one. Between the two SEC West rivals, nicknamed the Tigers, LSU finally has come to form and played like the team that we expected them to from day one. They've even their record at 2-2. Two and two. Auburn is 3-2, and two, and some folks question that. They were aided by a tough call against Arkansas and a tough call against the Ole Miss Rebels last week. And Gus Monson's team needs to improve and improve in a hurry because they're taking on an improved LSU team. Now, Ed Orshawan's very complimentary of Gus Monson, especially his offense, because this is an offense that has given LSU fits this year. South Carolina isn't as good as Auburn, or their schematics aren't the same as Auburn's. And Ed Orshawan had this to say about the Auburn series and Gus Monson's offense. Auburn is a very good football team. As we know, Auburn and LSU is always a great matchup. Sometimes comes down to the last play. Sometimes it'll come down to special teams play, whatever it is. I have a lot of respect for Gus Monson and his offense. The things that he does can give us problems. It already gave us problems this year. Uh, and I know that we're going to have to have our best game. 
Kickoff between the two Tigers set for 2.30 p.m. on CBS from Jordan-Hare Stadium on the Plains in Auburn, Alabama. Kicking off the slate of SEC games for the day at 11 a.m. on the SEC Network from Lexington is the Georgia Bulldogs and the Kentucky Wildcats. Georgia's 3-1, and one, Kentucky's 2-3. and three. Now, are we going to see a Wildcats team that played so well against Mississippi State and Tennessee, or are we going to see a Wildcats team that played like they did against Missouri. Only time will tell, but Mark Stoops this past week addressed the media on the state of his team. We have to have the team uh, prepared to play. And and, uh, I'm, you know, trying. You you try different tactics. You, um, you know, we work extremely hard. Uh, But uh, I got to find a way to reach this team. This team is different um, than other teams I've had. And uh, it's a different mentality, and I've got to find... Uh, the right way to, to, to reach and to continue to develop leadership and to get that pool from the top to play the way we're used to playing. It's a different year, but it is what it is. I, I expect more you know, from, from myself to, to get out of this team. The Ole Miss Rebels go into this week with a record of 1-4, and four, taking on winless Vanderbilt at 0-3, and, and the Rebels desperately need a victory. Probably could have and maybe should have had one against the Auburn Tigers. Ole Miss head coach Lane Kiffin addressed the media this past week on the state of his team and how they're getting better. You know, just get better. Um, we have in some areas. I think we're running the ball more consistent, and and we're playing a little bit better defense. So we just need to continue to put it all together. Or not continue. We need to put it all together, which we still have not. Um, we came closer this week, but, you know, didn't finish it up. That would have been a great win. 3 p.m. is the kickoff on the SEC Network from Music City in Nashville at Vanderbilt Stadium. Mississippi State will travel 82 miles to the east. They'll cross state lines and take on the Crimson Tide on Halloween night at 6 p.m. ESPN will telecast this game from Bryant-Denny Stadium. Alabama's undefeated at 5-0 and looking like the best team in the SEC. Okay, so they're not just looking like. They are the best team in the SEC. Taking on a struggling Mississippi State that isn't struggling on the defensive side like most prognosticators thought they would coming into 2020. They're struggling on the offensive side. The Bulldogs have had a week off to prepare for the Crimson Tide, and Mike Leach now talks about Alabama. You know, they're they're fast, and uh, occasionally I've played against some really fast teams that weren't as big as others. But, the, you know, these guys, are they're big, they're fast, and... You know, the thing is, is most of the, their players uh, we're already familiar with in the recruiting process. You know, I mean, they're the guys that uh, hovered around the top of the lists, you know. so. And unfortunately for the Alabama Crimson Tide, they will be without their star receiver, one of the best in the land, Jalen Waddell, who broke his ankle this past week in the win over Tennessee. But the Crimson Tide does have the same mentality that everybody else does. Next man up, and Alabama's depth at that position, or any position, shouldn't be a problem. The Arkansas Razorbacks are 2-2, two and two, and the Texas A&M Aggies are 3-1. and one. But throw out the records. This has been one of those rivalry series that has been like a rivalry game. Now, Arkansas hasn't been able to get the best of Texas A&M in the last couple of seasons, but it's still a closer game than the Aggies have liked. Aggie head coach Jimbo Fisher will be facing the Razorbacks for the second time in his career at Texas A&M. And he addressed the media this past week, explaining that no matter what league he's been in, there's always a series that's competitive like this one. I always did. I mean, you always have one. Because when you get in leagues with people like A&M and Arkansas was in a league together, you know, sometimes you like, right, I got to play these guys every year, so I got to figure out how to play them. So... The fear of playing or the, or the stigma of playing, if you only play them every so often, goes away. And you, you get used to playing somebody. It's like somebody at the park, and, you know, you got there at the park, and that guy beats your brains in every day, and he's, he's kicking your tail, and, you know, something. I'm going to come here and play, and I want to keep playing. i got to figure out how to beat him. So you learn how to compete against him. You learn the guy. You learn what he does, all those types of things. And I think that's what happens here. I mean, Arkansas and A&M have played for so many years. They know each other so well, and, and it means a lot to the alums and everybody else that uh, – you know, it, it just it becomes that game. And I've been almost every league I've ever been in, I've had those. The Missouri Tigers are two and two in a much improved football team, while the Florida Gators are two and one and haven't played a down of football since October the tenth. Six thirty PM is the kickoff on the SEC Network alternate channel from Ben Hill Griffin Stadium at Steve Spurrier Florida Field in Gainesville. That's gonna wrap up SEC Update. I'm Jason Crowder, your host.
King's Daughters Medical Center and Brookhaven Urology are pleased to announce the addition of Dr. Joel Duff to their medical staff. Dr. Duff specializes in general urology, kidney stones, men's and women's urological health, and diagnosing and treating urologic cancers. Don't let these health issues restrict your lifestyle and keep you from enjoying life with your family and friends. Dr. Duff and the staff at Brookhaven Urology are here to serve your needs. To make your appointment, call 601-833-5713 today. You often hear about Mississippi's best kept secrets. If you're looking for the perfect place for your next weekend getaway or the just right setting for your wedding reception, look no further than the best kept secret in Mississippi, the Cart Barn Inn. The Cart Barn Inn is tucked away in Bruce, Mississippi, less than 30 minutes from Oxford, and is a full service bed and breakfast. Each room at the Cart Barn Inn is fully furnished, including flat screen TVs, microwaves, refrigerators, wireless internet, comfortable seats seating areas, and docking stations for your smartphones just in case you forgot your charger. Enjoy breakfast in the morning or a nice evening walk in our privately fenced-in courtyard. Enjoy the game outside on our patio area or take a walk on our boardwalk to our private gazebo. Kay Tyler and her staff will meet every expectation during your stay. Call and book your reservation today at 662-983-7829 or log on to cartbarnin.com. Cart Barn Inn, the best-kept secret in Mississippi. The Spirit Media Network is providing coverage of sports, faith, and entertainment like no one else in Mississippi and the Deep South. No other media outlet touches all the bases as we do, from the Friday night lights to rubbing shoulders with the biggest names in college athletics. Be sure to follow us on our multiple platforms, including Facebook, Twitter, our YouTube channel, and by downloading our Roku slash smart TV channel, Spirit Live. Check out our website at spiritmedianet.com for upcoming projects and broadcasts. And stay up to date with what's happening on the Spirit Media Network, where we're changing the game.
plays on an end around. We just said you don't want to get too far away from what's been working, and that's exactly what North Pike has done on these on these last two plays. It, it really is, and Brennan, outside linebacker, stretches that play out again for the Eagles, and you know, a whole host of Eagles come up and make that tackle. But, Jason, I mean, here you are, you're third and long. What is this, third and about 14? Third and 14, what do you do? I mean, how, how do you – I mean, you really don't have a play, and now you go with a single back in the backfield. Is he back there for protection, or is it just, just going to be a safe play and hand it off? So McDowell takes his first snap of the second half, and he's going to air it out, overshoots everybody, and it's intercepted by South Pike. Coming up with it, guess who? Isavius Crossley, his second interception of the season as McDowell just kind of hung that one out there in YOLO land. And coming up with it is Crossley with the turnover. Great field position for South Pike. And they've got a fumble recovery for a touchdown, and now they've got an interception. They really do, and the defense has done their job. And, you know, stat-wise, Jason, that right there is nothing more than a punt. Sure. But emotional-wise and to get you motivated, that's a great job by that defense to get off the field on third down, get the turnover, and let's start getting the offense an opportunity to kind of get back in it. So let's find out what South Pike, the adjustments they've made at the half. We'll see what South Pike comes up with. The fake to Reynolds. Quick pass over the middle is McNeil for the Mississippi Ag first down, and he's down to the North Pike 45-yard line. We saw those quick passes in the first half, David, and they work again here. Yes, in the first half he was airmailing some of those, and just a quick slant right there to McNeil, a little five-yard route. He catches the seam, turns up, and picks up a total of about 15, 16 yards on the play. Move the chains, first and 10, South Pike. The Eagles looking to get back in this ball game. The handoff to Reynolds, jump cut to the 40, lowers his head, wrestled down at around the 36. They're going to say, nope, the 37, but a big gain here. Close to another Mississippi Act first down, and you can feel Uncle Mo starting to head over to the South Pike side. Yeah, and that brings up a second manageable. Great job of just reading it and bouncing to the outside there. Second and short for the Eagles. Fake pass to Reynolds, quick pass off to the races. It's J.J. Martin with the touchdown. His second touchdown catch of the season had two catches coming into tonight's game. Caught it, took off, touchdown, and South Pike right back in this ball game. My, what a, just what a difference two halves make, and Jason, you saw it. I mean, it's the third receiver he's hit right there. Just a quick slant route, cuts it up the seam, and they're giving him the little three or four-yard slant route. Why not continue to do it? South Pike's going to go for two here to make this 20 to 14. Here's Royal. He's going to keep for the two-point conversion. They say no good. I thought Royal got in. He stuck it in, stuck his foot in the ground, and turned it back inside, and he came up about a half a yard shy. Oh, wow. But, hey, what about South Pike coming out? Opening the second half, defensive stand, gets an interception, gets off the field on third down, and they take it down and they punch it in the end zone. They get six, and your score now is North Pike 20, South Pike 12. How about that? We'll take a 30-second break. Come back. This game has just got interesting. Back in 30 seconds here on the Spirit Media Network. Want to save 25 to 30% on your energy bills? Custom Metal Solutions can do it fast with retrofit metal roofing. Throughout the day, asphalt shingles absorb the sun's energy, keeping your attic space hot and forcing your air conditioning to run. Our cool metal roofing product helps reflect the sun's energy, keeping your attic cooler and your AC off. We use top-of-the-line equipment and cut each sheet to your exact measurement to ensure a fast and easy install. If you want the highest quality metal roofing product on the market, call Custom Metal Solutions today in Flowwood. Good look at the crowd here at Southwest Mississippi Community College here on a cold night. See a few blankets in the stands there. Can't blame them. Pretty good turnout here. The South Pike fans coming to their feet on the far side as the Eagles get a touchdown, the first offensive touchdown of the night. Cut the lead to eight. Now the ensuing kickoff to North Pike. Slung out of bounds on the far side. After a pretty good return, I want to say that that's Crosley. Crosley with the tackle again. So... This is interesting because we talked about it. I mean, you had literally just said it at halftime about how you want to stick to what works. 
You don't want to abandon your game plan completely. And North Pike on two plays, dug him in a hole, third down and long, then the interception. And now it's a completely different ball game because North Pike got away from what was working. And you got momentum on defense. You, you kind of feel like, okay, we've made the adjustments. Now we can pin our ears back and get after them. And we're fixing to find out what happens here on this second possession for North Pike. And they put Montgomery in motion. It's going to be the direct snap again to number 16, Lewis, and he has tackled once again a loss of four yards. Reggie Bonds on the tackle middle linebacker just eats up the space and gets in there and knocks that down. I do wonder if – is McDowell hurt? Is there something going on with him? I mean, we're looking for him on the sideline here because now they got him back in the ball game. McDowell played well, but for some reason they were going with the direct snap. Second and 14 as McDowell, quick slant here near side, caught by Cade Rush, Rush across the 35 near the 40. They got some of that lost yardage back. There's a good look at the KDMC Spirit Cam there. How about that little field level view? Tackle made there by Stewart, Tyron Stewart on the slant. Just does a really good job of coming up and closing from his safety spot to shut that down so it's not a, a bigger gain. Going to be third down now. Third down and uh, I'll say probably about five yards. Big conversion here. They shift to the left. North Pike with five seconds on the play clock. McDowell back to pass. McDowell over the middle. It's tipped up in the air and almost intercepted. Did he hang on to it? Yes, he did. They're saying South Pike ball. That's number 20, Tyron Stewart, active in the defensive backfield there. Comes down with interception and look out, Mo. Here we go. Here's a look from the field view. The ref's kind of in our way there, but it's tipped up in the air and pulled down by South Pike. And he's going after his favorite target there, Matthews, on the slant route, and they just jumped it, tipped it up, and he did what a good defensive back does, and that's run to the ball. What a great angle there. Nice job by Chris McDonald hanging with it tonight as the snap to Royal slant mm. pass, and it's going to be deflected. Boy, that one had a chance to be picked off incomplete as Royal tried to fit that one in there. It'll be second down and ten. Walker on the defense there for the Jaguars. Breaking that one up. And, Jason, they continue to go right back to that slant. I mean, that right there, I mean, you're looking at it right there. I mean, the guy that's on the hash mark right there, he just goes, drives the guy right there on the hash mark in front of him back. When he drives him back, he just falls off, just goes to his right and inside of that gap. I mean, it's just easy to read. Turning hand to Reynolds. Reynolds, minimal gain, but you do like the call here because – you want to see if you can get Reynolds going. He's your bell cow. Manages to pick up about four yards, five yards. Here it'll be third down coming up. Just a little belly read from the quarterback there, just laying the belly of the running back. And if the tackle kicks out, you give it. If he closes down, you pull it. Shotgun snap to Royal. Going to hand off to Reynolds, trying to get to the edge. Far side, he does. He's got the Mississippi Ag first down before he's popped out of bounds. And, we mentioned Uncle Mo. Uncle Mo is sitting on the side of the South Pike Eagles. Number 34 sealed uh, Jalen Martin for the Eagles. Seals that end right there and allows him to make the cut to, to get around the end there. Picks up the first down. So on the move are the South Pike Eagles as we're inside seven minutes here in this third quarter. South Pike scoring a touchdown moments ago. Conversion no good. And off here to Reynolds, he's spun forward and manages to pick up a few yards there. And they are getting Reynolds going, it looks like, here as he picks up about five yards. Yeah, Jalen Young in on the tackle for the Jaguars there. Uh, it's going to bring up second down and manageable, about five. Just a great job of staying with the run, keeping his feet churning, doing the things he needs to do. Maintain possession of the football. Royal, got a handoff. That's Brandon Johnson far side. Brandon Johnson with the Mississippi Ag first down, and he's inside the KDMC red zone, and here comes South Pike once again. <laughs> Unreal. You got to credit Coach Brinson Wall as we look at the KDMC replay. He's, he's, keep, he's yeah. keeping the team 
invested, keeping them keeping them motivated, and and he's got and a, focused, and, and it's balance. I mean, he he's come out the second half, and he's a lot more balanced with his play calling as far as run run pass ratio. First and ten. Inside the 15, handoff to Johnson. The ball is loose. There's a fumble. North Pike says they have it, and, and they, they do. Wow. Guess who? Number nine, Fred Lewis, comes up with the recovery. There's a look at the KDMC replay right in front of us, and there's Fred Lewis, as you mentioned, Johnny on the spot. Just a belly read play again, Jason, and it gets inside there, and the ball gets pulled out when you're in a crowd like that. Round line of scrimmage, you got to tuck that thing away and hang on to it. I'm no offensive coordinator. You should know that from the 100 conversations we've had about football. But don't you want to try to get your running game going here if you're North Pike? Because Absolutely. South Pike has a lot of momentum. The way you suck that momentum right back, turn, turn out about four or five minutes off the clock. Yeah, and, and right now, you know, they're going back. They've got the one back set in the backfield, so I look for them to go back to the running game. And off. No, it's going to be the fake. And now McDowell's got some room. McDowell across the 20 to 25. Pushed out of bounds rudely. And the Jaguar sideline says, that's okay. No flag. We'll take it. It's a Mississippi Ag first down. Heads up play by the sophomore. Quarterback does a great job. McDowell pulls it, gets on the edge. And Crowsley closes the gap there on the sideline. And does what he's supposed to, get him well, out Cross, of bounds. Crossley's been everywhere. He has. He's, <laughs> he's had a tremendous everywhere. night. Great-looking football player. A lot of athletes on the field tonight, and that's what you expected in this Pike County showdown. Pistol formation for mm, We McDowell. got a false start. Yep. Going to have a penalty here against the Jaguars. It's going to back them up. Number 51 moved. Uh, he moved a little bit early. A little too antsy to get out there and yep. block, right? I'll take that back. Brandon McKenzie, number 67, was the uh, right tackle that moved early there. That was going to be a, a slant pass. Do you think they try to use McDowell a little bit in the running game, just a little bit more here in the second half? Nope, he's going to throw a go route. Got a receiver open, and he almost came and up he with it. Dropped it. Oh, my goodness. Matthews was able to focus on it, even wow. after the de the defensive back flashed in front of him, and in and out of his hands, incomplete. It'll be second down. Wow, just a go route straight up the seam. He's got one on one coverage, and it just went straight through the bread basket. Chop block right there. I mean, it they it was a one man go route because all five offensive linemen went for the chop block, and they. <laughs> Just dropped it. Right call, just didn't execute it. How in the world did he still focus to have a, a chance at the football as Crossley flashed in front of him, and now we've got a timeout called by North Pike. North Pike. Some confusion there. And either the wrong personnel or the wrong alignment because Coach Mock was not happy. He has been in a bad mood tonight, but his team is up 20 to 12. We take a break back in 30 seconds on the Spirit Media Network. During times of uncertainty, it's comforting to know we have a healthcare system in our community that's been committed to supporting us for well over a century. In this current time, we are standing together and our bond is stronger than ever. KDMC, caring for our community like no one else can. Back with you here, second and 15 coming up here for North Pike. They burn a timeout to talk about it. Now back to pass is Caldwell, one hops at near side, incomplete to want to say that that's Lewis, and it is. Incomplete to Lewis, third and 15 now, and a, a very important third down play coming up. Jason, they tried to just peel that out there and just do a little screen out there, and the throw was low which is probably a good thing because it was going to end up in about a four-yard loss because you had two South Pike defenders right there, and so that will bring up a third and 15. 
So this Jaguar offense that had all the answers, all the answers in the first half, they haven't had any answers here in the second half. Caldwell trying to set up the screen, and Montgomery is blown up. Woo, baby. South Pikes, <laughs> the safety, or is that a linebacker, number seven linebacker? Brennan Felder come up and blew that one up and had no part of it. And have you noticed a theme here, Jason? Mm. We're playing the second half so far on the North Pike side. That's of the right. Field. That's right. The script is flipped, and you see how well that works for South Pike. So now it's fourth and 15, and they will have uh, the return man back there, number four. That is Mr. Reynolds for the return. High snap. There's the kick. It's going to be a spiraling kick. Fair catch called for, dropped, and then picked up. Heads up play there by number four, Reynolds. He dropped it but just turned around and said, you know what, I just need to gather back in. That's exactly what he did. And so now South Jones or South Pike, and I'm changing counties, trying to put us in a different part of the state and everything tonight. South Pike's going to take over just shy of the 40. Well, you've got a lot of directional things going on here tonight. you got North Pike and South Pike playing at Southwest. <laughs> but I wanted to go east. <laughs> I tried to take us where to, to Northwest earlier. Yeah. Northwest Community College. That's pretty good. Pretty good jump from here. Uh, that's a, a little, little bit. A little bit of a ride from here. <laughs> so let's see. The confidence has to be on Royal and the rest of the offense here. As Royal pulls it and got to keep across the forty. Minimal gain. And let's remember, South Pike, they were driving. Last possession, they fumble mm -hmm. inside the red zone, by the way. Turn the football over back to North Pike. North Pike can't do anything with it. Now South Pike with the football again. So if you're Coach Wall, you have to be thinking right now, we've had opportunities in this third quarter. We're only eight points away. We just need to complete a drive. I mean, it, it, they, I believe if you ask him right now, what do you need to do? And he said, we, he would tell you we need to complete a drive. And that time, Royal just quarterback keeper and uh, was stopped there by Robinson, number three for North Pike. There's, There's a North. good look at Royal, the quarterback. Royal back to pass, going to roll out to his right, throws down the field. Guess who once again? J.J. Martin with the catch. And it is enough for the Mississippi Ag first down. Again, J.J. Martin came in with two catches. He's got How? four or five catches tonight. 6'3", 180, Junior. How does that kid only have three catches? Because he's a big target, and it is a mismatch. The kid that's matched up on him out there is probably 5'8", five, 5'9". Five, he's 6'3". Well, the secondary is not very big for North Pike. 5'8", let's see, 5'11", 5'10". Wow. Reynolds Guess who? Blown Number up nine. in the backfield. Number nine, Fred Lewis. Read that from Jump Street, shot the gap on a blitz, and corrals him three yards deep in the backfield. And it, had it been a, a, fan, a, a fake, he probably would have tackled the running back and the quarterback. Second down and 12 is what we'll call it. Great job there. In the first half, it was Felder. It was his show. Second half, it's Fred Lewis. Royal, little play action, throw. Mm. Over the middle, incomplete. There was a little miscommunication. Martin may have cut the route off. Yeah, I think Martin saw the safety coming over the top there inside. He would just break the route off and say, here, I'll sit down right here. And Royal thought he was going to carry it on across the hash mark and do an incomplete pass. So that's going to bring up third and 12 from the 48-yard line. They're on 48. Let's see what... South Pike comes up with here. There's a good look at the field camera shot. KDMC Spirit Cam back to pass is Royal. Royal looking near side and making the catch. He's short of that first down marker. He needs about the 39-yard line. He's going to be down at the 41, 42. You got to think they roll the dice here and go for it. Yeah, it's going to be a, a long two and a short three to get the first down. And you wonder, do they hand it off or do they throw the slant route? 
We continue to move here in this third quarter as Royal going to have Reynolds to his left shoulder. Twins to the near side. Play clock down to two seconds. They've got to do something. Royal going to fake it. Keep it himself. He's got the first down, and a flag comes in at the end of the play. Do we have holding? Oh, that's such a terrible call if that's the case. It was at the end of the play like that one in the first half we saw. Oh, they are going to call holding, I think. Holding against South Pikes. So that brings the wow. first down back. Royal did a great job. Play got blown up in the backfield on the fake, so he pulls the ball and takes it off left in. Where was the hold? I don't know. I don't see. The receivers aren't even engaged with anyone. No, they're not, unless it was on interior lineman, but you're supposed to throw it at the spot, not just drop it. So, But, hey. Well, they don't ask us, do they? No. No. You know, it, <laughs> that, that we might have to go with that with Acme Glass Company for, you know, for sponsorship for the <laughs> officials because seeing is believing, right? <laughs> <laughs> Not saying they didn't do their job. I'm just saying, nah, seeing's believing. I didn't you, see you, it. You can get away with that because I mean, you're with Katie. You I mean KDMZ, obviously. <laughs> Wobbly kick here by Kobe Wall, but it does take a South Pike roll. How about that? Let's Inside go. the 15 at about the 13, 14 yard line. So they flip the field a bit here in terms of field position, and they back up the North Pike offense as we're inside. Three minutes to go here in this third quarter of play. So kind of a fast-moving third quarter. And if you're Coach Mock, that's what you want. You're up by eight points. If you're Coach Wall, you want, to, you want a little more time here. Well, if you're Coach Wall, you want to be able to uh, complete a drive and get it and get points out of this thing. Yeah. But, Jason, I don't think North Pike's even been to midfield the second half. No, no, I don't think so. And that's going to, that's going to loom large as this thing goes down – because you start trying to stretch things out and you start trying to push things, and next thing you know, you're doing things that you're not capable of doing and you end up turning it over. So North Pike with first and 10 of pistol formation. They hand off to Montgomery. Montgomery Ooh. is blown up in the backfield. Coming up is Derek Cotton, the cornerback. Wow. What a tackle. Hand off to him going off the left side, and the safety just comes up and just, I'm talking, Boom. blows it up. Now, Cotton, you know, normally cornerbacks, I mean, you don't see a whole lot of tackles out of him. That is his 15th tackle of the season. Well, he Bati had a Batiste was right there with him to help him clean it up, and you see it right there on the replay. Wow. Just a great form tackle. McDowell back to pass, quick pass in the zone here, close to the first down. As this complete to Jacoby Matthews, he does have enough for the Mississippi Ag first down, so a big play for the Jaguars here. Brennan Felder comes up, makes the tackle for the South Pike Eagles there to stop the play. Just a little seam route and set down right there in open space and let him hit you. Nothing real fancy, just find the seam and set down. Clock rolling here in this third quarter, 20 to 12. It was 20 to 6 at the half. South Pike's only six points at the half had come from a defensive fumble recovery. They did get a touchdown here in this third quarter. And they are still playing hard as tackled for a loss. I want to say that's Montgomery. Take your pick of South Pike Eagles that got there. Yeah, we could just run down the roster on that one. <laughs> I want to say it's our friend Zedrick Washington, that freshman. It He's is. one of the guys that got there first. Right there. And also you've got uh, Lipscomb in there, and you also got Cotton coming in there to help out as well. So second down and 11. Pistol formation once again for this Jaguar offense. Trips to the near side. They lead by eight points late in this third quarter. As McDowell back to pass, and it's too tall. Had to get it over the outstretched hands of the defensive back here. And it was Marquise Brown that had dropped back in coverage, covering, I want to say that that was Lewis. Mm -hmm. Defensive end dropping back in coverage. How about that? Yeah. Not too many times you see that. Did a good job of covering. That's going to bring up a third and long. These Pike County. Athletes are just something different. They just are. They're, 
you got kids that can play a, a number of positions. They're down 11. They'll send a man in motion. Caldwell, a little play action. Pocket breaks down. He's in trouble. Now wants to take off and run, and he's going to be well short of the first down. And Brennan Felder closes the gap and runs him out of bounds. And that's going to end the third quarter of play right there. Fourth quarter, of course, there all the players holding up four, four fingers. North Pike feels good about going to the fourth mm. quarter. South Pike's glad they're going to the fourth quarter. Buckle up for this one, my friend. Let's call this fourth quarter. How about it? 20 to 12, North Pike on top of South Pike. When we come back, it'll be a punting situation. The Jags will punt it back to the Eagles. What does the fourth quarter have in store? Let's find out in 30 seconds on the Spirit Media Network. When it comes to cooking meals, drying clothes, heating water, and my home, nothing beats natural gas from Centerpoint Energy. It's my most affordable energy option. It costs less to use than electricity, propane, and heating oil. So if you already have natural gas, keep it. If you're replacing an appliance, choose it. Natural gas, your best choice. Safe and affordable, rest assured. For more on the benefits of a natural gas home, visit centerpointenergy.com slash natural gas benefits. Centerpoint Energy. Always there. Off we go with the fourth and final quarter. 20 to 12, North Pike on top of South Pike, and North Pike about to punt the football away to South Pike. So this should be interesting here to see what's dialed up by South Pike. And here's the thing in that third quarter. South Pike had driven the ball inside the KDMC red zone, fumble. Then on that fourth down, they had converted the first down holding penalty. So two huge plays there in that third quarter that turned South Pike back and stole and or at least stymied a little bit of that momentum. Yeah, and right now they're going to get the ball, should be getting the ball on the plus side of the field when it's all said and done. You got Reynolds standing on the mid midfield strike. Oh, I think they got a piece of it. I think they got a piece of it on the punt. And South Pike is going to have phenomenal field position at their own 49-yard line. That was awfully close to being blocked. See if we can get the replay to show us if it was tipped or not. The way that ball is up in the air, it looks like it was tipped to me. It very well could have because it went straight up in the air versus any type of angle of flight. It just went straight up. Now, here's going to be the interesting part. On 49-yard line. Start of the fourth quarter, you're down eight. Do you go back to the run? Do you mm. air it out? Well, they were having success on, on the ground with Royal and then Reynolds. We said they needed to get him going. They did get a little momentum for him in that third quarter. Well, the success they've had so far in the second half is when they've gotten Reynolds involved in the ball game. He's flanked to the right shoulder of Royal. Going to take the handoff. Gets to midfield, plunges forward inside that midfield stripe to around the 49. We'll call it a gain of two. Bring up second down and eight. And Quinn makes the tackle, and he has to come out of the ball game. A name we have not called lately, Jason. We have not talked about Mr. Felder very yeah. much. You wonder if they're just running away from him. Maybe he's catching some double teams. You do wonder. Royal back to pass, pressure in his face, lets it go. Nobody home, and two defenders back there, and neither can come up with the interception. I'll be, I will be—I don't know who Royal was throwing to. I think he was honest. getting rid of it because he had pressure coming. They got popped right when he let it go. That was number 55, 55 for North Pike. That's uh, James Kate III, the big right defensive end, the junior, 6'2", six tall, six two, 270. So here we go, another big third down. First big third down of this fourth and final quarter. Royal back to pass, quick pass, going to be low, incomplete. Trying to get it far side to Keyshawn Elsey. And it's incomplete, and it looks like South Pike is going to have to punt this one away again. And Jason, I don't understand that call. I don't understand that call at all. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's you're not even close to getting somebody loose in a seam or, or getting them where they can pick up the first down yardage. I mean, it was going to be a catch and tackle right there. But I will say this. 
that it is a conservative call because now you can't hopefully keep them backed up, keep North Pike backed up back here inside the 20. Almost blocked. blocked. They ran into him. It was partially blocked. They did run into Kobe Wall, but no flag. And the ball is going to go out of bounds just shy of the 45-yard line. They did get a piece of yes, it. Yes, they did. Guess who got it? Number nine. Mr. Fred? Fred Lewis. He's been everywhere tonight. Young man's had a heck of a ball game. So, David, this is the best field position that North Pike has had in this second half. Think about that. Yeah, and the question is, what do you do with it here? How do, how do you respond? Do you come out here? Do you sustain a drive, go down, get some points? Or are you three and out again? Man in motion. They're going to hand it. No, double it's going to be the double reverse. <laughs> Beautifully executed. Coming the other way is Matthews with a convoy down the sideline, and he's got a big gain on the play. The Mississippi Ag first down. Out of bounds at the 31 of South Pike. And tell you what, let's, get, let's give some kudos to the, to the big hogs up front eating Anthony Varaska is out there leading the charge on the edge, 15 yards downfield, making a block, clearing the way for him. So, hey, great job by that young man there. But, hey, great idea. Defense is heavy. They're in pursuit. That will slow that pass rush down a little bit. And let's see if they go back to the ground attack here up by eight points. As McDowell will send him in motion. Quick squib pass. Going to be the double pass. No, Montgomery's going to take off. Montgomery looked like he wanted to pass. Instead, he takes off on the screen pass. He'll be shy of the 25. They'll say he's at about the 27-yard line, a gain of four. Tyron Stewart runs him out of bounds on the far side over there. And, Jason, again, that's a pass that's backwards. If that pass hits the ground, yeah. it is a live ball. Absolutely. And I'm not so sure they're not setting up a double pass off that. But I thought he was going to pass. Well, he acted like he was going to pull up there he for did. a second. He did. Helmet must have come off, so they're sending him out. So Montgomery's got to come out here. Just underway here in this fourth quarter. South Pike is the momentum was on the South Pike side in that third quarter. The Eagles were close to tying this thing up a couple of times. North Pike hoping to get a score here and I guess you could say somewhat put this thing to bed. Good look at our KDMC. Spirit cam there. Chris McDonald braving the elements tonight. Late substitution by North Pike. Direct snap. Going to be the carry here by the wide receiver. Looks like that's Lewis. Lewis picks up some of that yardage needed for that first down. He's going to be shy of the 20-yard line. Going to be third down, and we will call it third down and one. Derek Cotton and gang running him out of bounds on the near side. Just a direct snap to him. I mean, you kind of know what's coming when you see him behind behind the center. I mean, <laughs> you, you know, I mean, it's just can we get to the edge? Even we can figure that out if you're following the center, right? Yeah. Don't you take two downs here to just churn it out on the ground? I would. Use some clock. Use that power formation, which they're lined up in. And off Montgomery. First down, stiff arm to the 20, pushed out of bounds. And he is right at that KDMC Red zone, it is a Mississippi Ag first down right at the 20. Crowsley does a good job of corralling him and running him out of bounds. Just a straight give off the left side. Crowsley comes up and runs support and pushes him out after he makes the yardage to gain for the first down. Great job by our crew as always tonight. Newman Kazeri here in the press box with myself and David Culpepper. Peter Kazeri up top, braving the elements as well. Chris McDonald on the field as you see there with our KDMC Spirit Cam. I love the field view. Isn't that awesome? I don't know too many people that's got that. Reversing his field and going to be spun down for a loss of two, maybe three, is Jermarius Lewis. Well, they're kind of starting to get away from yeah. <laughs> what's been working for well, him. Well, they, you know, Jet Sweep brought him around and he got corralled and turned it back inside and Looks like he's going to lose about three on the play. That's going to bring up second down and 13. Wouldn't you just give it to Montgomery three or four straight times here, yeah. right side, left side? Line up, kick a field goal if I didn't yeah. pick up the first down. You don't have to get too far away from what you've been doing. Use Caldwell, or I'm sorry, McDowell, on some of the 
on some of the runs yeah. instead. It's intercepted by South Pike. And turning the other way with the pick <laughs> is number seven. Guess Brennan who? Felder. Brennan Felder. We have called his name quite a bit tonight. And the interception by McDowell to Felder, South Pike is okay. not done yet. Let me show you the danger of looking at your receiver right there. Yep. They know you're looking at him, you're staring him down, and he doesn't move. He just stays right there and says, okay, fine, throw it to me. I'll take it. So now you flip the field and you flip the script again. South Pike defense comes up big again to stall the drive, and that will give them possession at their own 39-yard line with 9.06 left to go in the fourth period. How about that quick change? Is Royal heads off to <clears throat> Reynolds, and Reynolds maybe back to the line of scrimmage, and that's it. Guess who? Is it our friend Felder again? Uh, yes, sir, it is. Well, Felder and Bates have been everywhere tonight. Fred Lewis. And Fortenberry came in on that one and cleaned up a little bit, too. That's going to bring up a second and ten again. If Wayne was here, he'd say, who are you going to give the big chicken to? Big chicken award. Here's Royal lowering the head. Boy, they're trying to strip that football. Did it come loose? Nope. Royal able to hang on to it. And he only picked up a yard. Kind of a... Curious play call there. Yeah, number ten stayed at home. He didn't take the he didn't take the the bait and run outside. He stayed home for the cutback. And uh, number ten Felder's doing a great job tonight. Ladarian, a little bit small fellow, around six three three oh seven, if you will. Plugging up the middle. Third down and nine is Royal option pitch near side to Reynolds. Reynolds trying to get the corner. He slips and falls after a gain of one, but getting there to finish it up was James Kate the third. He's well short of the first down. They're going to say, oh, they're stopping the clock because Reynolds looks to be a, a bit gimpy. I think that's Reynolds. Mm, I think that may not be. I think that may be Royal. I think that's Royal that's really? down. Really? Well, I see Royal. I thought I saw Royal. Well, I'll tell you what, we can sit here and guess all day long. They're going to they're gonna flip it. They're probably going to flip him over in a minute. We'll be able to see his number. Tell you what, while they're attending to the injured player, we're going to step aside and take a break. Back in 30 seconds here on the Spirit Media Network. When it comes to cooking meals, drying clothes, heating water, and my home, nothing beats natural gas from Centerpoint Energy. It's my most affordable energy option. It costs less to use than electricity, propane, and heating oil. So if you already have natural gas, keep it. If you're replacing an appliance, choose it. Natural gas, your best choice. Safe and affordable, rest assured. For more on the benefits of a natural gas home, visit centerpointenergy.com slash natural gas benefits. Centerpoint Energy, always there. Clock rolling here in this fourth quarter as we welcome you back. Here's the punt by Kobe Wall straight up in the air and end over end kick. Going to be a fair catch called and received and taken in by North Pike. Just across the 35-yard line as North Pike maintains a 20-12 lead here in this fourth and final quarter. Seven minutes and change remaining. This has been a weird fourth quarter. We're only a few minutes deep, but this has been an odd fourth quarter South Pike has had a couple of opportunities to get back in this game. North Pike, their play calling, you, you wonder what's going on with some of the plays they've chosen to run. It's been kind of an odd fourth quarter. I guess that's uh, par for the course the night before think, or, uh, Halloween. Well, Jason, neither one of the, the offenses have been able to get in sync. Neither one of them have been able to, to stay on track, and they've had plays that have made them get behind the chain. So we'll see what happens here with the – Jaguars on first and ten. Man in motion to the far side is Lewis. Going to be the handoff to Montgomery. Montgomery gets up to about the 40-yard line. We'll call it a gain of four. Bring up second down and six. Number 42 on the stop there for the Eagles. And I don't have him on my lineup card, but he's on the main roster, I thought. Maybe not. Yes, he is. There he is, Mr. Ard. So second and six coming up. Got a score update. Yeah. We're caving highs up 41-30 over Natchez in the fourth quarter. How about that? Last reported score we had, McComb is on top of 
Raymond, direct snap going to be to Lewis. Lewis across the 40, gets to the 42, maybe the 43. He's going to be pushed back. It'll be third down and short. Let's see where they officially spot it. Oh, they Pushed. didn't give him a whole lot on the play. It's going to be third down and five. Yeah, Bonds on the stop along with a whole lot of other South Pike Eagles coming in for the stop. It's going to bring it again, Jason. We said it a couple of drives ago. Anytime he goes back in direct snap formation, the defense knows what's happening. They know what's coming. Just stay yeah. at home and wait for it. So third and five. They do have McDowell back in the game at quarterback. McDowell back Real to route. pass. Wants to throw double coverage again, and he overshoots everyone. Intended receiver was number five, Fountain. And he had 16 on a wheel route here. He turns around. They run two guys oh, out. They gosh. run a guy on a out and on an in and up on the seam, and he had a wheel route running up the bottom half of the numbers. There was not a defender within 20 yards of him. He was wide open. Wide open. So that's going to bring up a fourth and five. This has been the uh, fourth quarter. Let's see who can not get a punt blocked. <laughs> it's been a lot of almost at blocking a punt. We know that some have been deflected, but none have been blocked yet entirely. Fake. Oh, they're going to fake it, and they are not going to get it. Oh, my. What a what call. What a call this point in the game. Wow. And South Pike turns back North Pike on the fake punt. <laughs> What else can go crazy on special teams in Woo! this fourth quarter? Goodness. I don't, you know, you got an opportunity there to flip the field right there. And I don't understand mm. that call right there because they were all just hunkered down. Wow. So they give South Pike the ball. At the 40. Yeah. Right at the 40, 41. 41 yard line mm. at the North Pike 41 yard line. Can they make some noise here with 539 left to go in the fourth period? Let's go look at the jam band there as Royal back to pass over the head of his intended receiver trying to hit J.J. Martin. And Martin's 6'3". If you put it too tall for Martin, it's way too tall. Yeah, and he was open. He, he, was. he was open in the seam. That would have given him the ball probably down inside the 20-yard line, just inside the 20-yard line if he completes that. But he overshot him. Second and 10 now for the – Eagles, they got a great opportunity here. They fake the handoff to Reynolds. Royal back to pass. He wants to take off and run. He's to the 35. Royal to the 30. Out of bounds at the 25. He's got the Mississippi Ag first down. And Royal has made some mistakes tonight, but you give him some credit there. He knew that he had a lane. He took off, and he got the first down. Well, you see right there number three, the defender that's supposed to be having contain uh, on the corner right there. Turned his back and went upfield, and when he did, that was a telltale sign, hey, I need to run and because it was vacated at that point. So you Injured got, Jaguar on defense, David. Tavorius Quinn, the uh, one of the five linebackers that they use here. And he's getting helped off the field. Checking in for him is number 40. That's going to be Jaden Taylor, looks like. Well, if you're South Pike, do you go back to that play? with J.J. Martin on the slant. Oh, for sure. But for Royal, he's got to be able to put it in the bread basket of Martin and then let him do what he does best in space. That's run fast and outrun everybody and, yeah. and break tackles. He's a he's a big load to bring down. And off to Reynolds. Nothing doing. Gets to the line of scrimmage, and that's it. No gain on the play to bring up second and ten. Lewis in on the stop for the Jaguars. Just a straight give off the left side there. Just a little run play. Picks up maybe a foot. That's going to bring up second down in a long nine, short ten. Royal going to keep it and now dump it off to Reynolds. Reynolds trying to get to the corner, reverses his field. What a cutback by Reynolds. Wow. And he's close to the Mississippi Ag first down. Looks like he was dead to rights on the far side. Cut it back against the grain, and he's close to a first down. Royal just flips it out in the flats to him. Reynolds takes it, puts his foot in the ground, 
And Fred Lewis, kind of, when the play was over, just kind of looked back like I had him, and I don't know what <laughs> happened. Like I had him on the sideline, and where? Wow. Third down and two for the Eagles. Hand off to Reynolds. No, it's going to be Royal on the quarterback keeper. He plunges as they're inside that KDMC red zone. He's inside the 15, down to the 14-yard line. And the young man, number 40, that came in for the injured player earlier, uh, Taylor, mm -hmm. just made the tackle. Well, this is kind of what we expected. We expected it to come down to the fourth quarter. There is a timeout on the field, I believe. Did they call timeout? I don't think they did. Play clock is still rolling. Maybe he's about to call a timeout. Uh, it's kind of a – I don't know what's going on. <laughs> I'm going to be honest with you. Play clock's down to 1-0. That's it. Timeout, South Pike. All right, we will take the timeout with them. It's getting kind of hectic here. Getting tight, 20-12. to 12. Can South Pike get the score and the two-point conversion to tie it? We'll find out. 30 seconds, and we're back on the Spirit Media Network. Need your business to stand out and pop? Then it's time to visit Polshap's screen print and embroidery in Brandon. Polshap's can custom design your marketing campaigns with custom screen printing, embroidery, and promotional materials that set you apart from the competition. Speaking of setting apart, Polshap's does all their work in-house from start to finish. No outsourcing, meaning faster turnaround time and lower prices for you, the customer. Visit Polshap's.com to find out more and get started on standing out. Timeout over with both fan bases getting a little nervous here as we're inside three and a half minutes to go in this fourth and final quarter. First and ten inside the 15. It's going to be the direct snap to Johnson who navigates his way in and out of traffic. I don't think he got past the line of scrimmage. They may give him a yard, and they do. Second down to nine coming up. Yeah, and you got Dradarius Robinson on the tackle coming up from his linebacker position and making the stop and just a straight snap, direct snap to the skill guy, and he just kind of follows his blockers, goes off the right side there, picks up short yardage there, comes up with second and nine here with 2.50 left to go in the ball game. So you've got, looks like that's Reynolds taking the direct snap, and it is student body left. Reynolds going to cut back, now tries to hurdle a man and manages to get close to the 10-yard line. They may give him a yard. There wasn't a whole lot there mm. on that play either, so it's going to bring up third down. Well, South Pike's really working this clock down pretty good here with 2.43 left to go in the ball game, And, you know, he just jumps over, and North Pike just rallies to the ball and, and stops him. And we've got another time. Well, it looks like we're going – well, no. Play clock's still rolling, and so yeah. is the game clock. This well, it is kind interesting. Of it's kind of confusing when you see the whole offensive – team go over to the numbers and huddle up. And they're going to let this roll down, it looks like, and they call a timeout, I'm assuming. Play clock 1-0, and now the official says timeout, South Pike. That leaves them with one timeout, does it not? It does. We'll step aside with them back in 30 seconds on the Spirit Media Network. I can totally see us cooking in this kitchen. I can totally see us cooking like pros with natural gas. Oh, I would love to soak in that tub. I'd love to save energy and money with a natural gas water heater. I can imagine cuddling up in here. Because natural gas heating keeps the house comfortable when we need it. We have to get this house. We have to get natural gas. We're investing in infrastructure to help bring comfort and savings to you. Visit centerpointenergy.com slash natural gas benefits. Centerpoint Energy, always there. Third down and nine, two minutes even in this fourth and final quarter. South Pike down by eight points. They need the touchdown and the two-point conversion just to tie. North Pike, South Pike, what a game it's been as Royal drops to pass. Quick pass, tipped up in the air. Did he intercept it? Yes. It's tipped up in the air and intercepted by number 12 for North Pike. That's going to be Jalen Young, the junior defensive lineman, tipped it to himself and came up with the pick. And, David, that might do it. I think that's your ball game because South Pike is down to one timeout. And I'm going to tell you what, that young man did a heck of a job because that was a wow. screen pass over there 
to the left side over there, Jason, and it just he read it. He stayed with it, got right there with the, the lead blocker and, and broke it thing up, and here we go. Hey, they've got a turnover chain down there on the <laughs> sideline. How about that? I love it. I love it. And we've got to figure out who's going to – might have to announce that tomorrow after we watch the tape, right, who's going to get the, the big chicken. Shotgun for call. He's back to pass. Wow. And it's going to be in and out of the hands of the intended receiver. I don't know why you passed there as number five dropped it, Fountain hit him in the worst place possible right in the hands. Wow. Wow. Why number would you one, throw it? Number one, why would you throw it? And number two, how'd you drop it? <laughs> wow. With a minute 46 <laughs> left, they got one time out. If you run it, pick up a first down. It's over. Over two, in, in two or three plays in this series of downs, the ball game's over. Why in the world would you wow. throw it? Wow. Do not understand that. It brings up a long second and ten. Man in motion to the near side as Caldwell is in the shotgun. He's back to pass again. He's going to be. The ball is just kind of chunked here on the near side. And are they calling it a backwards pass? It's a good shot by Chris on the field. I'm calling it incomplete pass. And that stops the clock. What in the world? Pressure coming off the edge right there. Number 26 for South Pike comes in and cleans up. But Chase Powell. Goodness gracious. Why are, that's two plays in a row that we've thrown. That very easily could have ended up in a in a sack and a fumble and a scoop and score. And wow, I think they're saying he's down now because they have or no no it's a flag. What was the call? We missed it. Did they call intentional grounding? Is that what it was? So yep. now it's third and fifteen. Okay, so they got him backed up right at the ten yard line. Don't you just run it here? Force them to burn their final time out and then punt it. Now they run. End around coming near side. Staying in bounds is the receiver. Smart play there as he gets across the 10. And now South Pike's going to burn their final time out. <laughs> I'm confused. I do not understand. I am absolutely. My, my football IQ must be a lot lower than I thought it was. Oh, goodness. Just a jet sweep coming around. The play is blown up out there by number seven. Uh, Brennan, Felder, and a whole host of Eagles. Jason, this brings up a fourth and 15. Actually, he lost yardage. Yeah. He lost another five. So this is going to be fourth and, yeah, fourth and 15. He's fourth and 15 here with a minute 24 left. Basically no game. If you're south, Pike, do you go for the do you go for the block? Yes. Or do you set up the return? Oof. Because if you hit him, if you rough him, well, they have Reynolds back who Reynolds has – we've already seen what he can do with the football in his hands. I say you set the return up. Yeah, I agree. I agree. you got to set the return up here, give yourself a, a fighter's chance. You're going to get the ball on the plus side of the field. You should get the ball somewhere inside the 40-yard line if everything plays out right. But you got to make sure he gets it off. Of course, this is a big, big play for the punter. He's got to get that thing out of there. Uh, I think he just took the safety. No, I think they blew it dead. Timeout, North Pike. Pike. Oh. He was he was fixing to take the safety. That was strange. And then you're going to kick it to him with a minute 20 left? Goodness gracious. I'm not understanding some of this. <laughs> uh, guess what? I'm right there with you. Yeah. I, I can't figure all this out. Why do you throw the football at all? Wow. I, I don't know. I'm 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 lost. I'm completely lost. Tell you what, we'll try to squeeze in a 30-second break here while they meet. We're back in 30 seconds on the Spirit Media Network. Hello, I'm Gary Jolly from the Tractor Store in Richland. Now's the best time of the year to say more with Mahindra. And it all starts with zero. Pay zero down and 0% interest up to 60 months. That's more for less on many of Mahindra's best-selling models with tractors that deliver more lift, capacity, fuel efficiency, and built-in weight. So get zero down, 0% interest for up to 60 months on Mahindra, the world's number one selling tractor, Mahindra, available at the Tractor Store in Richland. Here's the punt, and Wynn does get it away and taking a good roll for North Pike inside the midfield stripe down to the 45. But you are going to have great field position here for South Pike 
With a minute and change to go, down by eight, they need the touchdown and they need the two-point conversion. You needed Reynolds to fair catch that ball and, yeah. and keep it from right. one. You gain yardage out of it. Number two, the clock. You gain time because the clock doesn't run on that. So now they've got to go uh, 55 yards in a minute 34 with no timeouts. No, they do. No, I, I, South Pike is out of. Yeah, they South out Pike's of time, out. Timeouts? I think they yeah, are. I got them out out of timeouts. So what do you dial up here? Royal back to pass. Quick pass here near side. McNeil falls down, but he does catch it. It's a only a two-yard two gain. gain. South that, Pike's got to go. That's got to be put out there. That's got to be put out to the outside where he can catch it and get out of bounds. <laughs> right now, they're just burning. The officials are taking their sweet time. Goodness gracious. He's like he's just looking at some clothes in a store or something. He's just ball behind Reynolds. Reynolds somehow gets away, reverses his field. What a block by Royal. Reynolds still trying to stay on his feet. He may Reynolds go. He may go. go. Reynolds has pasture. Reynolds, one block. Reynolds is going to take it to the house. Touchdown, South Pike. There are no flags. He ran 150 yards to gain 50. <laughs> wow. What just happened? Please tell me we've got a KDMC replay. <laughs> Newman's on top of it. He throws it out in the flat to Reynolds. It's balls behind him. It's blown up out there by a couple of players. They don't wrap up on him. The quarterback comes up and lays a block, allows him. He cuts back, goes back another 10 yards. Now he runs upfield, and he's got a wall with the uh, blockers over there. Fred Lewis is worn out. He can't catch him. Touchdown. And so South now, Pike, so now you've got 20 to 18. Now the two-point conversion attempt. Can they get it? Time Clock out. Is stopped by North Pike. What about it, David Culpepper? Wow, what a ball game. Can we look at the replay again while they're in timeout? Maybe we can this squeeze it in This play is crazy. Here's the KDMC replay. The ball is snapped from the 45. He At this point, he's back to the 30 two-yard line, cuts up field, gets back up to 40. <laughs> and at this point, wow. Wow. Just a great job of blocking and not giving up. That's just amazing. And the game's not over. No, it's, it's not 20 over. 20 to 18 with 46 seconds left to go. South Pike's going for two to go for the tie. Can you imagine what overtime's going to be oh like? Oh, my gosh. If Royal, we get it. It's going to set him down. Royal going to try to keep himself and push in. Did Touch, he get he's it? He's in. He's in. There's the shot. He got it. The two-point conversion is good. You've got to be kidding me. The score at the half was 20-6 to six North Pike and is now 20-20 with 35 seconds left. And Jason, you can really go back and look. It was the upper, It was the, the fact that they played everything on the North Pike side of the ball the That's second right. half, much like they did in the first half on the South Pike side of the ball, so, side of the field. They've got no points, mm -mm. none. If North Pike ends up losing this game, Don't they're gonna go keep, back. they're gonna kick themselves because they had plenty of opportunity to win this ball game by converting some some first downs and not doing things that were not successful for them. Mm -hmm. And it's just – and then they had the opportunity down here to run the ball three times and kill the clock. I still go back to that last possession. You've got a chance yes. to drain every second of the clock and get out of here with a win, and you chose to pass on first and second down, and they both were incomplete, and it stopped the clock, and now – Jason, they took the ball with a minute 43. Yeah. Minute 43. It's first and 10 with a minute 43, and they gave the ball back. Unbelievable. Unbelievable turn of events. All right. You got one guy back for North Pike at the. Now you got two scooting back. Okay. You got two going back now. They're splitting it. So that's going to be Matthews on one side. I want to say that that's. Either Knox or Fountain on the far side. Big Kobe Wall going to kick it off here. 
Or is that Williams? That's Williams. And over end kick. Going to be taken here by Matthews. Matthews reverses his field. Matthews gets to the 30, and that's it. Wow. What a second half. <laughs> and he's tackled by Williams, Latrell Williams. <laughs> the punt, the kickoff guy yeah. is also the offensive lineman. Yeah, 5'10", 270, and he, he runs down there and makes the tackle 30 yards downfield. Think South Pike wants to win? I believe they do. Goodness great. And we're on the home side here mm -hmm. at Southwest Mississippi Community College. The body language and the – it's just not the overall good. volume is not good. It's not good. Well, it's first and ten. What do you do here? The third. Because you don't want to line. turn it over. What do you do? You feel like you have to get out of here with a win because if you go into overtime, South Pike has all the momentum. McDowell back to pass. It's intercepted. Intercepted down the near sideline. Coming My up with it word. is Brennan Felder. Who's had a heck of a ball game. And why do you – Wow. Unbelievable. You just gave them the ball. Wow. And he got a great return in, David. They didn't call him out of bounds till about just shy of the 20. And here's the thing. He stared him down the whole way. I mean, every, I mean everybody on, on that side of the field knew what was fixed to take place. So, wow. Do we, <laughs> Holy do we have more excitement coming from Mr. Reynolds and Mr. Royal here? I just flipped my flipboard. Got to flip it again. Yeah. That's how crazy this game is. Wow. Goodness gracious. Royal, who scored the two points to tie this thing moments ago, now has a chance to win it. Royal, back to pass. Out route, far side, bobble, oh. dropped by J.J. Martin. It hit him right in the numbers. It bounced up and went off his helmet and had a great opportunity right there. Hey, see Coach Wall grabbing him going, hey, it's okay. Get back in there. Here's what I need you to do. That would have set him up at first the and goal. Yeah, first or and second, goal yeah. at the 10. So it's second and 10 now. The ball is resting at right at the 20-yard line. And you wonder, they don't, they don't attempt a whole lot of field goals. Throwing it towards the end zone. He's Has got a man, man open. Out there and incomplete. He was trying to hit Martin once again. And he had a man running across the middle right here that's wide open. Oh, goodness. He missed. Who is that? I think that's Number 10. Elzy. Elzy. He missed Elzy. Elzy was wide open, could have mm. walked in the end zone on a slant route going across the middle. Third down and 10. South Pike down 20 to 6 at the half. All right, let me ask you a question, Jason. Do you just hand it off here and play for overtime and just let the clock run out versus trying to throw something? At this point in this game, I don't know. I think if you're South Pike, you're you're playing with house money. Royal steps up, throws it at the last moment, incomplete. It's going to be fourth down and ten here. And they do not kick field goals, so you would have to think this is a throw to the end zone with 18 ticks left in this fourth quarter. Do we have – Oh, they're meeting. Uh I don't see a flag. I don't either. Well, yeah, we do. Legal participation oh, against was, the offense. Oh, no, I know what it was. He was across the line of scrimmage. Yeah. Legal forward pass. Yep. So it's going to back him up. Fourth down, and it should be about fourth and 15, and it is. Yep. Yeah. So that puts you at about the, what is that, about the 26th? Tell you what you could do. You could put Martin on the outside and just run him on a go route. Oh, yeah. Let him go up and get it. I mean, look look at Martin over there. He's being covered by 5'7". By 5'7", five, 5'8". Seven. By, by five, seven, five, defensive back. You could run everything out over there, then run Reynolds underneath behind him in a wheel route. Here's Royal back to pass, throws it towards the end zone. Martin has to turn around for it, and it was there, and it's incomplete. And now South Pike going to have to turn it over on downs with about eight seconds left. The ball was up. He had time. He had protection. He threw it up, and Martin had a chance to go get it and just could not pull it in. Tell you what, Martin's been a pretty impressive ball ball game tonight. Oh, yeah, yeah. So that means <laughs> North Pike takes over. <laughs> with, eight, 20, with eight seconds. At the 20-yard line with eight <laughs> seconds, it's first and ten. 
Looks like they're just going to take it and kneel down on it right here, and let's go to overtime. So looks like we're going to get a little free football on Friday night. Yeah, as I used to say in radio, put a quarter on top of the radio because we got extra football. And that's exactly what they do. Three seconds, two seconds, one second. Let's go to overtime in Pike County. How about it? <laughs> Who would have thunk it? North Pike 20, South Pike 20. We'll go to overtime. Let's take a 60-second break. We'll come back, get you all set up for overtime as South Pike has erased a two-score deficit, and we're knotted up headed to overtime. Back in 60 seconds on the Spirit media network hello i'm gary jolly from the tractor store in richland now's the best time of the year to say more with mahindra and it all starts with zero pay zero down and zero percent interest up to 60 months that's more for less on many of mahindra's best-selling models with tractors that deliver more lift capacity fuel efficiency and built-in weight so get zero down zero percent interest for up to 60 months on mahindra the world's number one selling tractor mahindra available at the tractor store in richland Back with you here as we get all set for overtime. Tell you what, let's step aside for another 30-second break as the officials and coaches are meeting. We'll come back and get you set up for overtime. Back in 30 seconds on the Spirit Media Network. The Outdoorsman Tractor Package is here at Mississippi A. Choose a 3 Series John Deere tractor tailored to your horsepower needs and get all the attachments you require for the fall in one convenient package, including a loader, disc, and spreader starting at $315 a month. And as always, you get it all covered by our 10-year warranty. With 0% financing for 60 months, it's a deal that is sure to help you get your food plots ready for the season. Some restrictions apply. See dealer for details. Offer expires 10-31-19. Back with you here as we're getting all set for overtime. North Pike and South Pike. And a welcome back in David Culpepper. The first game we've ever done. There's a good shot at yeah. Coach Mock instructing his kids. But if you're North Pike, you had a chance to win this game with about a minute 40, two minute 40, whatever it was, and two passes. Unbelievable. Two passes on first and second down. They're incomplete. I'm still scratching my head on what that was about. Because <laughs> they could have run it three times, killed, you know, run the clock out, and come on and go to the house. Now, the way overtime works in high school, Jason, is each team is given the ball at the 10-yard line. Yeah. Not the 25 like college, but the 10-yard line. And each team has an opportunity to match what the other team did or you lose. Meaning, if South Pike scores here, then North Pike gets an opportunity to score. Touchdown. Snap, handoff. Is that Reynolds? I think it is. Yes. He'll Reynolds. Go, he'll pick up four. Him? He'll pick up four. Four yards here. Be second and goal from the six. And that North Pike defensive line, Jason, is tired. Oh, you could tell they've been out there quite a bit. This whole second half, it has all been on them on their side of the field. G give credit to the South Pike team because they have just not given up as Royal. Got a fake, going to keep Royal, trying to get to the corner. Royal stretches Touchdown. towards the pylon. Did he get it? He did. Touchdown. South Pike with their first lead of the night, and it comes in overtime here at Southwest Mississippi Community College with nine, at the 9.47 p.m. mark, their first lead of the night. And, well, Kevious Bates is out there on contain, and he just can't get the edge sealed off in time to get there for him, and it is a touchdown. And you know they're going to go for two. I mean, that's their, that's their M.O. Yeah. So we're going to – if South Pike can get this two-point conversion, then the pressure's on North Pike to get a score and two. Right on their following offensive possession. So do, right here, Jason, do you hand it off up the middle? Do you oh. give it to Reynolds, or do you get out on the edge? Oh, man. Looking at the way that side, that, the, the right side of the defense is winded right there, I believe I go right back at them and, and make them have to get out there and defend the edge out there. And, and, and Because here's the thing. You, pop, you run it up in there. You got number 10 sitting up in there. He's tired. 
Yeah. But that's a lot of humanity to have to move out of the way. Oh, yeah. you got to move him six feet. Yeah. All right. But if you get on the outside out there, you've got lanes you can cut back into, plus you've got the corner, and you got a tired group of defenders out there on the edge that have not held contain really the whole fourth quarter. I like the call with going outside because you're getting away from, from Felder and Bates for that matter. Got a new running back in, number six for South Pike. It's going to be Batiste. The turn the hand for the two point. Can they get there? No, no, they cannot. So North Pike now can score a touchdown, kick the extra point, and win this thing. There's a look at the KDMC Spirit Cam replay. He's just trying to get around the edge, and he's denied. He actually tries to throw a pass out there. He's not able to complete the pass. Great job of getting him out on the edge and letting him, you know, have the option to run it or to throw it. Problem was there was no white shirt out there to throw it to. So now <laughs> North Pike picks their offensive. Here we go. Plays. And they've got Lewis back in there for the <clears throat> direct snap. I, I'll be honest, this has not worked all night for North Pike. Not once. So I'm a little surprised to see this on the first play at overtime. Lewis going to put a man in motion. He's going to fake. He's going to keep. And South Pike reads it like you might expect. Yeah. Only a gain of a couple. It'll be second and goal from the eight. I think you put McDowell back in there and give him a chance to run the football. He's, he's shown the ability to navigate through traffic. Yeah, and Walker. He's got great speed. Yeah, and Walker in on the stop right there for the Eagles. He's back in. Montgomery's back. And they put McDowell back in McDowell, the game as well. I'm sorry. Well, they got McDowell and Montgomery back in there. Zoom into the quarterback formation. Pistol formation here for McDowell. Takes a snap, fakes, throws. Touchdown, North Pike. Great job of belly play, pull it. Hit the guy right there, make the linebacker step up, give you a lane to throw the ball in. Great job by the quarterback right there of uh, Montgomery doing what he needs to do. Beautiful play design, and now North Pike, all they've got to do is hit this extra point. You know South Pike is coming with the block. Snap back, hold us down, the kick is away. It is up, and it is good! And North Pike wins it 27-26 in overtime. Wow, what a ball game. What a game. There's a good look at the celebration on the field by North Pike. Jason, I'll tell you what, hats off, hats off to both of these both teams. teams. Both of these teams have battled hard, both of these teams Never gave up. Uh, tell of two halves, really. Yeah. First half is all North Pike. Second half is all South Pike. Overtime is all North Pike. Fantastic game. Fantastic game. Closing thoughts before we get out of here. There's a great shot at the home crowd here on the press box side for North Pike. They're excited. They snapped the two-game losing streak to South Pike and stay in the region race. Here's the thing. Both of these teams are going to the playoffs. We yes. know that. So credit to both teams. I tell you, whoever has to play either of these teams, they're in for it. Yes, they are, because they're going to play two very well-coached teams. Have you got the scenario of the playoffs right yeah. here for, for North Pike? Okay, the, so North the, Pike's won. That's right. So the scenario was this. If South Pike were to beat North Pike, which that didn't happen, so we'll just move on. If Macomb wins and North Pike wins by nine points or less, then Macomb's the number one seed, North Pike is the number two seed, and South Pike is the number three seed. So that appears as what we've got here, although they won by one point. They didn't win by nine. Macomb was beating Raymond by two scores the last time we looked. So it looks like, at the worst right now, Macomb should be the number one, North Pike the two, South Pike the three. That's the way we understand it, according to our friend Brandon Shields. So it looks like South Pike may be the number three because Macomb, they were beating – Raymond tonight pretty handily. So North Pike with this win, they should be the number two seed. And that means that they'll get to host. Yeah, and that's a great opportunity for them to host and, and to get back. You know, great job, Coach Mock, first-year coach here, to come in and be able to, to pull this win off and to break a two-game you know, two losing streak. 
to to your neighbors to the south. And hey, great job. I do question some of the uh, oh, potential play calling, yes. but hey, you know what? I'm up here in the play booth with the headset <laughs> talking about what he's doing after he's done it. I'm not down there calling it. And you and I both know that he very well could have called a different play and a quarterback checked out of it and went to something else. That's true. And that's, true. And, and that's what we don't know. Uh, some final scores. Uh, I'm trying to check and see. Look at there. South Panola 36, Warner Central 35 in two overtimes. How about that? Uh See what we got. Brookhaven Academy bumped off Lee Academy night 35 to 6. So Brookhaven Academy, I think, goes to North Delta next week for second round of the playoffs. Oh, okay. It's a long ride to North Delta. Um, I'm trying to find the Raymond McComb score, and I don't oh, see I've it. Oh, I've got it. I could get that. Is it for final? You. I think it is final. Let me check and see what we've got here. The. Hey, what about the reclassifications that came out this week? Yeah, pretty interesting, huh? Yeah, pretty Last interesting. report I had was about 30 minutes ago. McComb was on 26 top 26-14. 26-14, yeah. and it has gone final. So, McComb go. wins that ball game by 12. Pretty good uh, Pretty good environment tonight for football, and I want to thank you for coming to doing the game. You picked a good one, didn't you? I, hey, I, I'll be here every week if we can have them like this. This is awesome. No doubt. No doubt. Great hey, stuff. Thanks for coming over tonight and doing the game with me. I appreciate it. Absolutely. And thank you for your support. KDMC's report. We can't do it without KDMC and our sponsors, of course. And we appreciate everybody at King's Daughters Medical Center, David Culpepper and his entire crew. Phenomenal job as always. That's going to do it here tonight, folks. Thanks for hanging out with us. Newman Kazari, Peter Kazari, Chris McDonald. And for David Culpepper, I'm Jason Scarborough. 27-26, your final score, North Pike on top of South Pike in overtime to snap the two-game skid to the Eagles. That's the final. We'll see you next week here on the Spirit Media Network.